have started to buzz now as the National Leaguers have moved out to their positions in earnest. And looking them over, defensively, Stan Musial last year was in the outfield. Today is at first base. At second base is Johnny Temple of the fine Cincinnati Red Lakes, along with his partner over there in Cincinnati, Roy McMillan, at shortstop. Don Hope, who came over to Cincinnati from the Chicago Cubs and who certainly has been a big factor in the climb of the Cincinnati Red Legs again this year at third base. And out in left field, a youngster who made the big jump last year to Cincinnati, Frank Robinson. Willie Mays, who may be hobbled a little. He has pounded two fouls down off his feet in the last uh, week of the first half of the baseball season in center field. And Hank Aaron, the great right fielder, uh, ready to go. So the first batter for the American League is Harvey Keene. This is Harvey's fifth All-Star game. Right-hand batter takes a fastball inside from Kurt Simmons, ball one. The outfield's playing straight away for him. There's a breeze blowing across from left to right field. Left field foul line, 351 feet, right field foul line, 310. Wind up by the left hand of the pitch is low, inside, ball two. Harvey on the regular season is batting 256, has five home runs. He's batting 222 in all-star competition, nine at bats. Fastball, strike call over the outside corner above the knees. Two balls and one strike now to Harvey Keene. Harvey started the season for the Tigers at shortstop, was moved over to third base in the last month or so. Here's the left-handers offering it to change up curve. Strike two call. Top shoulder. So Kurt Simmons stands out there now with a 2-2 count. And the leadoff batter for the American League, Harvey Keene. Here's the 2-2 delivery to the right-hand batter. Swings on this one. A fly ball hit in the left field. Moving over is Frank Robinson. He has plenty of room. Jogging in. Under it has it. One out. So Harvey Keene lifts the fly ball in the left field. Taken by Frank Robinson easily. One away for the American League in the top of the first inning. And one of the most capable ball players for size and weight. Nellie Fox, the second baseman. This is Nellie's seventh All-Star game. He has batted 385. Nelly in the regular season has a 3.24 batting average, four home runs, but his average does not indicate his great strength to Chicago. Looks at a fastball over the inside corner for strike. Nelly, a left-hand batter, goes back as far as legally possible in that restraining line in the left-hand batter's box. And Hope, knowing that Nelly's a great punter, moves in on the edge of the infield grass, outfield shaded to the right. Pitch by the left-hander is inside, too close, one ball, one strike. Deep in right field is Hank Aaron. Willie Mays split in right center. And Robinson protecting in left. Right side of the infield backed up. Simmons looks in. Bailey hangs the sign down. The 1-1 pitch is swung on, sliced foul. Going upstairs and the first souvenir. So it's one ball and two strikes. Nelly is one of the most charmingest young guys you ever did see. Many people think that he perhaps has stolen the tennis ball and has stuffed it in his left cheek. He uses a rather fat bat, big handle, and plays it almost like the bow of a violin. Swings on this one, pops one, back at second base. Drifting back there is Johnny Temple, near the edge of the outfield grass, and he's got it for round number two. So Kurt Simmons disposes of the first two men to face him. This is Kurt's third year in the All-Star. He started one game, has pitched five innings, has given up only two hits, two walks, and four strikeouts. He has no one lost record. The batter now is Al Kaline, the right fielder from the Tigers. Gets a fastball over the inside corner for a strike. Al's currently hitting 283 in the American League season with five home runs. This is his third All-Star game. He's a bonus baby. Swings on a curve and drives it foul over the top of the roof out in left field. And it's two strikes. Al receives some reported $35,000. Signed off the San Lots of Baltimore and has been a permanent fixture over in Detroit. Tiger fans a few years ago had a contest to try and find a nickname for him. Here's the two-strike pitch to him. It's a little too close for ball one. With the name of Al Kaline, somebody came up with Salty. One ball, two strikes. Two up, nobody on. A pitch by Simmons, a soft curve outside. Two balls, two strikes now. On deck for the American League is Mickey Mantle. The outfield for the National League is swung around to the left, and the shortstop and third baseman for the National League backed up. Here's the 2-2 delivery now to Al Kaline. Swings on this one, a drive deep in the center field. Willie Mays turns his back, going near the wall. He slips, and he grabs it. That ball was hit deep near the warning path, about 400 feet straight away in center field. And in the top of the first inning, Kurt 
Jack Simmons retires the American League. One, two, three. Nothing across, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. So at the middle of the first inning, the score is American League nothing, the National League coming to bat. Well, prior to the day, about 942,883 have been here at the All-Star Games, and with the attendance today, that'll make about one million people who have attended these All-Star Games over the last 24 years. Now, that's a lot of people. But just listen to this. Last year alone, Gillette sold ten times that many razors in the United States. Yes, sir, ten million Gillette razors. Now, you know as well as I do that to sell that many razors, the Gillette Super Speed has to deliver clean, really comfortable shaves to men with many combinations of skin and beard. And deliver it does. You see, there are three Gillette Super Speed razors, light, regular, and heavy. One of them is just right for you with the right blade edge exposure, edge angle, and the weight to shave you in a breeze. The light is for men with light beards, regular for average skin and beard. Heavy for tough, wiry beards. So pick yours and get clean, easy shaves that make you look better and feel better. Only a dollar for your Gillette Super Speed Razor, Gillette Blue Blade Dispenser, and trim travel case at a nearby store. In the last half of the first inning for the National League, Johnny Temple will move in. This is Johnny's second All-Star game last year. Johnny got himself a 500 batting average. He's hitting for a 292 average in the regular National League season. The American League now has Jim Bunning on the mound. He's 110 while losing two. This is his first All-Star game appearance. Big, tall, lanky right-hander delivers a fastball strike call. Jim is just 24, has a birthday in October. He has started 12 games, completed seven. His earned run average on the regular season is 2.03. Outfield straight away. Pitch to Temple is outside. One ball, one strike. Bunning uh, stands about 6'3", and he started in professional baseball back in 1950. And as we said earlier, a year ago, he was fighting to make sure he stayed up with the Tigers and was not going back down to Charleston. He's ready now with a 1-1 pitch. Comes down, and it's swung on, foul back. Fastball over the outside corner. Bunning's best pitch, according to American League batters, is a slider, a kind of a nickel curve off a fastball. And it's a big one. He's been able to strike out 93 American League batters with it so far. He's issued only 32 bases on balls. Temple stands deep in that right-hand batter's box in that interesting home uniform of the Cincinnati Red Legs, white and red. Pitched by Bunning is a curve inside. Two balls, two strikes. Count even. No score in the last half of the first inning. First man up for the National League here in the 24th All-Star Game. In left field for the American League, Ted Williams, Mantle in center, Al Kaline in right, George Kell at third, Keen at short, Fox at second, Words at first. Pitch is too low, over the plate, but low ball three. Three balls and two strikes. Umpire Frank Descoli of the National League working over the plate. And the men in blue, always doing a superlative job on every play, on every pitch, looking very carefully. So the wind-up now on the 3-2 pitch, and it comes down to Johnny Temple, and he swings on it and fouls it off, going up over the top of the roof and back downstairs as it hits the facade. And another souvenir of this happy group here in St. Louis. Earlier this morning, the rain which was falling certainly did not present a picture of a beautiful day, but with the light clouds, fleecy white up overhead, and the blue skies, it is a perfect setting here today. All right, the wind-up now with a 3-2 pitch, and it comes down to the right-hand batter. He swings on this one, a fly ball in the center field. Mickey Mantle going back, still going back, and he pulls it in. Down near the track in right center field in front of the 405-foot marker. As Mickey Mantle now races the ball and hauls it in. One out. That will bring up Hank Aaron, number 44 of the National League Milwaukee Braves. Hank Aaron is having one of the truly great seasons of any ball player's career. Hitting to a 347 average, has hit 27 home runs, and this is his third All-Star game, and he has a very respectable 667 batting average. Stands deep in the box, strides into the ball, pitch by Bunny, fastball, lines it out the left field, moving over is Ted Williams, and he grabs it. Hank Aaron hanging that so-called frozen rope out there in the left field, and Ted Williams moving quickly to his right, hauls it in. Two out, and the big hand is for Stan the Man Musial. Not only the very partisan St. Louis fans,
fans, but baseball fans all around the world. Hail the great performance over the years by this gentleman right now, Stan Musial. Left hand batter and a pitch to him. Fastball outside. Musial and Ted Williams have had perhaps one of the greatest individual battles in all star competition. This is Musial's 14th. He has hit five home runs. He was tied last year by Williams, but then he hit one late in the game in Washington and went ahead. Takes outside. Ball two. Musial Slender Bill stands deep in the box. Slightly closed dance. Stan has a sort of a little dance that he does, sort of loosening up and getting his hips flexed just before he swings. Pulls the bat cocked away from his left ear. Jim Bunning, the right-hander, comes down. There's a swing and a fly ball. Hit foul over near the stands. Work sticking out. Going out over by the stands. It's out of play. So two balls and one strike to Stan Musial. With two out in the last half of the first inning and no score. The pregame consensus was that with this short right field wall, which has a wall out at the base about 12 feet high, would be an inviting target for these left-hand batters. The outfield shades Mr. Musial way around to the right. Pitch comes down. Pass ball over the outside corner. Two and two. Nelly Fox is practically joining the outfielders group. He's on the edge of the outfield grass at second base. Works backed up guarding the foul line at first. Mantle in right center. K-line is deep in right field. Next pitch, a fastball. He misses the corner outside. Ball three, strike two. So Jim Bunning, who perhaps a year ago never dreamed that he would be here in St. Louis in 1957, starting the All-Star game, working as a calm, cool veteran, starts it with a wind-up and a 3-2 pitch to Musial. Swings on this one. It's a fly ball deep in the left center field. Williams jogs back under it, and he has it. Round number three. So just as in the first inning for the American League, the National League are down in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. And Jim Bunning and Kurt Simmons are out of standoff. So at the end of the first inning, the score is American League, not the National League, nothing. Fans, part of my job as an announcer is to keep up-to-the-minute scorecard showing runs, hits, stolen bases, substitutions, everything that happens in the ball game. So I have to have a dependable pen, a pen that writes all the time, every time, a pen that won't stop writing or run out of ink. That's why I use the Paper Mate Piggyback Capri, the first and only pen with a built-in spare refill. This refill is in two sections, one on top of the other, sort of piggyback. Each section has its own silvered point and its own ink supply. Now, if you damage the point or run out of ink in one section, you simply reverse it with the other section, and they're right back in the ballgame with a completely new silvered point and a completely fresh supply. So take it from me, Bob Neal, and sports writers coast to coast. Get a new paper made Capri, the only pen with a piggyback refill. Just a dollar ninety-five at stores everywhere. The American League now moves in for their second uh, swing at the offerings of Kurt Simmons. And the first man to face Kurt will be Mickey Mantle, the switcher, batting this time from the right-hand side. Mickey is in his sixth All-Star game, has batted to a 294 average. Regular season, he's hitting 369, has 22 home runs. Wind up by Kurt, comes down, fastball over the inside corner above the knee, strike one. Willie Mays is split over in left center. Deep in left is Frank Robinson on the left side of the infield for the National League backed up. Pitch by Simmons. A ground ball. Slow roller. Third baseman out charging in. Mantle going. He'll have to hurry. The throw is high. Save it first. And it's a base hit. Mantle had the throw beaten. And since Musial had gone up so beautifully, pulling the throw down... Peggy Mantle gets the first hit of the ball game. A top roller down the third baseline that Don Holt came charging in for. But with Mantle's great speed, even a perfect throw would not have gotten him. Here's Ted Williams stepping in. Left-hand batter against the left-hand pitcher. First pitch, a curveball low and outside to Ted Williams. This is Ted's 13th All-Star game. Batted to a 361 average. Regular season batting 343 with 20 home runs. Check of the runner at first by Kurt Simmons. The pitch to Williams. Swung on. Foul. Back upstairs. One ball and one strike now. Testing prior to the game to watch 
Ted Williams and Stan Musial exchanged notes. And even the other ball players stopping to watch in admiration these two great competitors. One on one, nobody out. Mantle leads away. The pitch comes down, and he checks his swing, takes inside. Ball two, strike one. The outfield is pulled just a shade to the right for Williams. Aaron backed up near the wall. Time is called. Mantle uh, does not want his hard dome cap. He wants his regular baseball cap. And Jim Turner comes over to get it for him. Mickey standing at first with that shock of blonde hair exposed to the bright sunshine here in St. Louis. Ted Williams wearing a little short sort of ankle shin guard over his right leg. Simmons looks to first to pitch to Williams. Sliced foul upstairs and it's a 2-2 count. First hit. Obtained by the American League. A single by Mickey Mantle. A chop roller down the third baseline. Mantle a base runner. Nobody out. Simmons, the left-hander, checks it first. The pitch to Williams. He checks his swing inside. Ball three. Three and two count now. Frankie Corsetti coaching at third base. Jim Turner coaching at first. Simmons looks into Bailey. Hangs the sign down. Takes the check of the runner first. Mantle leads away. Pitches. Ball four. Inside. So the American League. Now has runners at second and first, and the first base on balls issued by Kurt Simmons to Ted Williams. No, it leaves American Leaguers at second and first. And it brings up Nick Works of the Cleveland Indians. Nick with a 295 batting average, has 11 home runs. This is his third All-Star game, but the first that he has played first base. Other two previous appearances were as an outfielder. The outfield is shaded to the right. He's a left-hand batter. Mandel at second. Williams at first. Third baseman in close. Pitch to him. Slices a foul upstairs. Lou Burdett starts to work in the National League bullpen. Right-hander. Don Hulk is about two steps off the edge of the infield grass at third. Mantle leads away from second. Williams with a good lead away from first. Musial playing back of the runner. Swings and fouls it back. Grabbed by Ed Bailey. So it's two strikes to Vic Wirtz. Wirtz using a golf glove on his right hand. I think about halfway deep in the batter's box. Kurt Simmons now on the spot with American League runners at second and first. Nobody out. Pitching to Vic Wirtz. Here's the two-strike pitch. Checks inside, and he fouls it off his handle of his bat as he tries to pull the bat out of there. The count remains two strikes. Kirk Simmons takes a little look out to the bullpen, sees that he's got some help out there if he needs it. The outfield is deep. Left-hand batting Vic Wirtz against the left-hander Kirk Simmons. Runners in second and first. There goes Mantle third. A swing and a ground ball hit through the shortstop. Mantle rounds third, and he's coming on to score. So, with Mickey Mantle breaking towards third, Vic Wirtz slices a single into left field, and the American League breaks on top with a first run of the ball game. So, Vic Wirtz gets the first RBI of the 24th All-Star game as he strokes a single in through the left side of the infield into left field. Matter now is Yogi Berra. One run off Kurt Simmons. That's his second hit he's given up. He's walked one batter. And Yogi Berra batting at the number seven spot. This is his 10th All-Star game. His current batting average, 232, takes inside for ball one. Ted Williams, the base runner at second. Vic Wirtz, the runner at first. Burdett continues to work. American League breaks on top. One to nothing. It's the top of the second. Barra follows a curveball outside. Ball two. Williams strolling away from second. With a left-hand batter up, Musial playing back to the runner at first base. Wirtz and Williams lead away. Simmons checks him. Two-ball pitch to Yogi Barra as ball three, a fastball inside. Three and nothing. On deck for the American League, the third baseman, George Cal. Now moving out to have a chat with the pitcher, Kurt Simmons, is the catcher from the Cincinnati Redlegs, Ed Bailey. 
and the second baseman, Johnny Temple. And they may be chatting with Kurt in order to give Lou Burdett some time to get heated up. Umpire Frank Descoli moves out along with them, and now the conference is over. Starting back to his position at second base, Johnny Temple. Bailey comes back to the plate. Yogi Barra standing in there. Three balls a count. Earns at second and first. Three nothing pitch is ball four. So Kurt Simmons has given up two singles and two walks, and the bases are loaded. Ted Williams moves to third. Vic Wirtz moves to second. And here comes Walt Alston, the manager of the National League All-Stars, coming out to have a chat with Kurt Simmons, and possibly, since he's walking very deliberately, to bring in Lou Burdett. So the American League were the chance to start off with a substantial bundle of runs, having three men on and George Cal ready to move in there, a right-hand batter. It may be the manager, Walt Alston, will go to the bullpen for a right-hand pitcher, and that's what it's going to be. So Kurt Simmons will give way now in the second inning with nobody out. He has worked officially one inning. He has given up two hits. He has walked two. He has not struck out a batter. He's charged with one run. And the three men left on the bases are his responsibility. So Lou Burnett of the Milwaukee Braves takes the stroll in from the left field bullpen. Right-hand pitcher. Burnett in the regular season has won six while losing six. He's been in 17 games. He has struck out 14, worked 122 innings, given up 118 hits. And his earned run average is 3.84. So Kurt Simmons, who prior to this year, had not allowed a run to be scored against him, goes out early. And Burnett starts to make the move to the mound. So the first change for the National League finds the right-hand pitcher replacing the left-hander. And the National League fans, who are in the majority here in Bush Stadium in St. Louis, look on. Lou Burdett's first name is Selva, and he's a junior. He was born November the 22nd, 1926, at Nitro, West Virginia. So he's bound to be an explosive pitcher. He's six foot two. he's a 180-pounder, and his hobbies are hunting and fishing. Lou, uh, originally belonged uh, in the Yankee chain, this in the American League for the Yankees in 1950, and then was with the Boston uh, franchise, and then when they moved over to Milwaukee, he went along with them. So Burdett, fine-looking, tall, rangy right-hander, comes on now to pitch to George Cal. George has certainly been one of the hard luck ball players of all time. He has had in his career a broken wrist, a broken jaw, and this year has been hit twice on the head by pitched balls. And recently in Baltimore, when they had a George Kellnight, they presented him with that plastic hard top liner, which protected him. First pitch inside to George Kell, ball one. Ted Williams, a base runner at third. Pick works on at second. Yogi Berra on at first. And the left-hander now starts to go to work in the National League bullpen. Johnny Antonelli, number 43. Pitch by Burdett. He swung on a ground ball. That is foul down the third baseline. One ball, one strike. Kell, despite his injuries, has a 281 average in the American League race. His five home runs. This is his ninth All-Star game, and he has a 190 batting average. Burdett and Bailey get together on their signs. Bailey, a picture of red and white. And the pitcher, Lou Burdett, wearing the blue cap with the red bill of the Milwaukee Braves. Bases loaded. Here's the 1-1 pitch to George Carroll. Checks his swing on a curveball. It's outside. Ball two. Looks down to Frankie Grossetti, the coach of the New York Yankees. Coaching the American League team at third base. The outfield straight away for Cal. Nobody out. Pitch is strike two call. Fastball over that outside corner. Two balls, two strikes. Cal moves back in there. 
American League leading, one to nothing. Williams at third, Works at second, and Yogi Berra, the base runner, at first. They move off, lead away. Wind up, and the 2-2 pitch comes down. Sidearm curveball outside, ball three. Cal was not about to go fishing. And this fine young competitor from Swifton, Arkansas, who's had a great career in the major leagues, stands in there now with a full count. Burdett is ready. Here's the payoff pitch coming to Cal. Swings on it. Bloops one to the right side. In foul territory moves Dan Musio. Backing up, and he grabs it. No advance by the runners, and George Cal fouls to Stan Musio. Just outside the foul line, about ten feet back of first base. One out. Jim Bunning is due to bat. It may be that Grissetti is passing along to Bunning some idea of how that ball of Burdett moves. Bunning has been used a couple of times by the Tigers in rather key spots. He can move rather quickly. He's a good punter. Pitch to him. He swings and misses on a fastball. Strike one. He looks again down at Grissetti for his sign. Frankie, rubbing the side of his right side, hooks onto his belt. The outfield shade around to the opposite side for the pitcher, figuring that Burdett will pitch him outside and he won't be able to pull it. Willie Mays in right center field. Pitch comes down to him. Curveball outside. One on one. Johnny Antonelli pumping the mitt out in the National League bullpen. We're in the top of the second American League leading one to nothing. Base is loaded. One ball, one strike. Williams starts down the line. The pitch is strike two call. A good fastball right down the middle. Ted has a rather interesting motion out there. As he starts and gets ready to work, he sort of pauses just before he delivers it. Jim Bunning, number 14, stroking that bat. Works with a good lead away from second. Yogi Barrow moves off first, with Musial playing inside of the runner. It's a sideline curveball, popped out in the center field. Willie Mays coming hard, going out is Roy McMillan, and McMillan grabs it. And Williams has moved down the line, the third goes back. So Looper dead. Gets the two big outs here in the second inning, but the bases are still loaded, and Harvey Keene is due up. Roy McMillan, the shortstop, went back a second, out about 15 feet in the outfield grass, and squeezed that one proud number two. So Harvey Keene, who flied to left field his first time up in the first inning, moves in. Right-hand batter against the right-hand throwing Lou Burdett. National League Rooters leaning back a little more comfortably now. They were really poised up on the edge of their seats. American League one, National League nothing, top of the second inning. Burdett reads the sign from Ed Bailey. Starts into his windup. Here's the pitch to Keene, the fastball inside. Ball one. Lou gets a little rosin. Willie Mays straight away in center. Frank Robinson backed up and left. And Hank Aaron over and right. Fastball outside. Ball two. Two or nothing now to Harvey Keene. And Harvey takes a flash down at Frankie Crosetti. Keene stands about three quarters deep in the right hand batter's box. Harvey has very small feet. Spent one year in minor league ball, signed from Milwaukee. Here's the windup in the two ball pitch. A sidearm curveball outside. Ball three. And with the bases loaded, Lou Burdett now is in a very tight spot. Out, Williams at third, works at second, Barrett first, and a ball three count. Here's a three nothing pitch, strike call. Harvey has started down towards first. That is known as a slight psychological move. On a three nothing pitch, the batter, if he thinks he might be able to psychologically uh, take some advantage, starts moving down towards first. The umpire is watching that corner very closely. A swing and a sliced foul going into the stands out in right field. So Harvey Keene now stands in there with a 3-2 count as Lou Burdett, pitching courageously behind the batter, 3-0, has even the count. Full count now, three balls and two strikes. 
Luberdette gets a little rosin. Ed Bailey hangs the sign down for him to read it. Dad is ready to work. He's going to stretch. Three to pitch. Inside ball four. Oh, Harvey Keene takes a walk. That's a run batted in for Harvey. That run is charged to Kurt Simmons. And it forces Ted Williams in from third base. So the American League now leads 2 to nothing. Nick Wirtz moves over to third. Yogi Barra down to second. And Harvey Keene is on first. Base on balls is charged to Lou Burdett. The batter's Nellie Fox. Pitch to Nellie, a curveball that hangs outside. Ball one. Fox is the eighth man to bat here in the second inning. First time up in the first inning, Nellie popped to the second baseman. Burdett looking in very carefully. Fox chokes up on that bat. There's a pitch coming down to him. Swings on a fastball, and he misses. One and one. The outfield shaded just a few steps around to the right for a little now. During the course of a ball game, when Nelly is playing in the field, you can hear him with that chant of, come on, come on, come on. He's up about three or four inches on the handle of the bat. Wind up by Burdett. The 1-1 pitch to Fox. Swings, and there's a fly ball hit in the short left field. Robinson has it, and he does grab it. And that's all in the second inning for the American League. As they come up with two runs on two hits, there were three bases on balls. There were no errors, and three men left on base. So Lou Burdett pitches one inning and gets the American League out to the top of the second after two runs. At the middle of the second inning, the score is American League 2, National League nothing. Pause for station identification. Who is the WGY Schenectady? Knowing how to swim is fine, but it's not enough. The New York State Division of Safety says youngsters should be taught the importance of water safety as well. Circus. But he gets that power in there and lashes the ball. 
F1 uh, up on top in the right center field uh, stands in the recent series with the Cardinals. Swings on this one, a ground ball. One hopper to Nellie Fox. He feeds it over to Vic Wirtz, and there's two out in the second inning. So F. Bailey pounds one in the dirt, grabbed by Nellie Fox, over to Vic Wirtz at first. 4-3 if you have to be scoring with us. Two out in the second inning. Brings up Frank Robinson. Left fielder for the Cincinnati Red Legs. Fine competitor. 3-12 batting average in the regular National League season. 13 home runs. In all-star competition, he's looking for his first home run. This is his second game. Number 20. Swings and fouls it off. Robinson is playing with a patch on his left elbow. And this young man last year made quite a jump. He's strong, powerfully built, although slender. And he also holds that bat cocked out and away and whips it around. Outfield playing him straight away. Two out. Last half of the second inning. American League 2, National League nothing. Here's the windup. Pitch to him. Too high. Fastball. One ball and one strike now to Frank Robinson. George Cow backed up a few steps at third. Keen deep at short. 1-1 one, one delivery is a curve inside the low ball, too. Bob Sheffing, the manager of the Chicago Cubs, coaching down at first, and Bobby Bragan, manager of the Pittsburgh Pirates, coaching at third. Here's the 2-1 pitch to Robinson. Swings a one-hopper to George Cal. He looks at it and pumps it across to Vic Wirtz, and that's all for the National League in the second inning. Play going Cal to Wirtz, third to first. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. And so Jim Bunning has retired the first mem- six members of the National League All-Stars in order. And at the end of two innings of play, the score at the end of the second inning is American League 2, the National League nothing. Well, Harvey Keene is playing at shortstop, and considering his youth, he's played in a lot of all-star games. And what a future Harvey has. Only 26, and he's a veteran all-star, captain of the Detroit Tigers, and voted certainly top managerial material. Now, you'd expect him to be a Gillette man, and he is. Of the three Gillette Super Speed Razors, light, regular, and heavy, Harvey chooses the light. How about you? Are you using a razor that's matched to your skin and beard? If not, stop at your nearby store and choose the Gillette Super Speed Razor that's right for you. You'll be amazed at the clean, refreshing shaves, the wonderfully comfortable shaves you get. Do it soon, eh? Top of the third inning now for the American League. Having sent eight men to bat in the second inning. Leading off in the top of the third will be Al Kaline. He flied to Willie Mays in the first inning, a long fly ball, deep in the center field. Breeze is a crosswind flying from left to right. Lou Burnett, who came on in relief of Kurt Simmons out there, wind up by the right-hander. First pitch to the right-hand the batter is a bunt attempt. Miss strike one. Al's bat went out beautifully, out about ten feet in front of the plate, but the ball remained in Ed Bailey's mitt. who uses about as much rosin as many major symphonies, is ready to work. Here's the one-strike pitch. Change-up high. One ball, one strike. By our Frank Dascoli of the National League, calling balls and strikes. And umpire Dascoli, a very imposing figure, stands around six foot four and really gets down low and around that catcher. Next pitch, over the outside corner, sidearm fastball. One ball, two strikes. Number six, fleet footed. Got field playing him straight away. Polk is backed up a few more steps at third base. Here's the one two delivery to him. Swung on and foul. Line down the left field line. Into the temporary box seats and a souvenir. The dugouts here in St. Louis are perhaps the longest in uh, baseball. They're really spacious. And there's a guardrail up in front of the top step. One ball and two strikes. Dow K line on deck is Mickey Mantle. Pitch to him. Swung on. Ground ball hit by a hole. Going out to left field. Racing in for it is Frank Robinson. And there's K line making the turn. Now he has to hustle back as the throw goes into second base. The ball was knocked down a little bit by Don Hope, but it was a screamer. Had no chance to really get it. And K line was tempted to try for second since Robinson, who was playing deep, had to come in for it. 
but Robinson, with good speed, holds him to a single. So that's the first hit off Blue Burnett. That is hit number three for the American League. And as they did in the second inning, they get the first man on, on here in the third. Oak is in close at third as the left-hand batting Mickey Mantle, who switched from the right side in the second inning and got himself a top roller that he beat out for a base hit. Mickey batting from the left side, and that right field wall will be very inviting to him. K-line leads away, Musial holds against the runner, fastball outside, ball two. Mantle stands deep in that left-hand batter's box. And he holds the bat right on the end. Just barely gets his index finger and his thumb of his right hand around the up end of the bat. Outfield shaded to the right. Pitch by Burdett. Swung on and missed. Two balls, one strike. Mr. Mantle was not attempting to bunt. He had a big stroke on that one. That'll help that breeze blowing out towards right field. Oak is on the edge of the infield grass at third. McMillan shaded over near second. Willie Mays over in right center. Deep in right is Aaron. Runner at first. Al Kaline leads away. The pitch is swung on. Popped up into left center field. Robinson moving in. McMillan drifting back out. Shading his eyes with his glove. And it is uh, McMillan grabbing it. And as Robinson came behind him, McMillan fell to the grass but hung on to the ball. So Mantle pops to McMillan out in short left center field. Willie Mays had moved in, and perhaps Willie, calling the play, was not uh, heard with the crowd, building up in the crescendo of a possible collision. Ted Williams, the batter. Ted has walked, not officially been up here in this game. Williams, one home run behind Musial in all-star game competition, looks now as the right-hander comes down with a curveball that's high and outside. Ball one. American League two, National League nothing. Top of the third inning. With one out and one on. Williams busy with that bat. Burdett checks the run at first. Pitch to Williams. Takes a fastball for a strike over the outside corner above the knees. That digs in with that left foot. Plants it in there good. Now K-Line, the base runner at first, being held close by Stan Musial. All right, K-Line leads away. The check of the run of the pitch to Williams. Swung on a ground ball, and Musial reaches up and grabs. Steps on first, no chance for a play at second. That was one of those self-defense plays where the ball sharply hit, bounced up almost into the face of Stan Musial, threw the glove up, able to knock the ball down and keep it close enough that he could recover. Fine play by Musial. And Ted Williams is officially... Scored is grounding out to Musial and moving down the second on the play is Al Kaline. Batter now is Vic Works. He slapped a single through the left side of the infield and was responsible for driving in the first American League run. Al Kaline, base runner at second with a good lead. Outfield pull to the right. Pitch by Burdett. He swung on and missed. He took a little off a curveball. So Lou Burnett, who seems to be warming to the task, he rushed him on in when Kurt Simmons ran into trouble in the second inning. Burnett came in with the bases loaded, got Carroll to foul out to Musial, running the pop to the shortstop, and walked Keene to force in the second run. Pitch to Ertz outside. One ball, one strike. Vic, I believe, would rather hit a curveball than he would a fastball. And in the American League season, the... Right-handers, at least in the American League, try to pitch him outside with that fastball where he can't pull it. Burdett reads the sign. Here's the 1-1 pitch to work. Swung on. Popped up in the right center field. Willie Mays coming in. Going out is Johnny Temple. Draws a beat on it. Moves in and takes it about two steps in on the outfield grass. And so Vic Works pops to the second baseman in the third inning for the American League. No runs. One hit. No errors, and one man left on, and Luper Dan has worked two innings now, and has been able to hold the American League. So at the middle of the third inning, the score is American League two, 
And the National League, nothing. Well, it's really been hot here in St. Louis, not only the heat, but the humidity. And these are the days you really appreciate the clean, refreshed feeling that only a shaving cream shave can give. And I'm one of those 12 million men who think instant lather shaving creams are tops. Gillette Foamy is my choice. Fast and convenient? Ah, you said it. A touch of the nozzle and there's your lather, rich and creamy. Stand-up lather that does a real job of beard softening. You shave clean as a whistle, wind up looking and feeling you again. And Gillette Foamy has an extra plus. K34, the exclusive antiseptic that destroys harmful bacteria on the face. Now, some stores may still have Gillette Foamy in a special money-saving combination package. You get a 79-cent can of Gillette Foamy, plus a 10-blade dispenser of Gillette Blue Blades worth 49 cents, a regular dollar 28-cent value for only a dollar. Here's a real bargain. Look for it at a store near you. For the National League, in the last half of the third inning, Don Hope, the third baseman, will step in there. Hope stands deep in the box and sort of around the plate. Pitched by Bunning is swung on a ground ball taken by Harvey Keene. He fires it across to Wirtz and out number one of the third inning for the National League as Hope bounces out short to first. And Jim Bunning has retired the first seven members of the National League All-Stars to face him. Interesting, in the first inning, the National Leaguers went out on fly balls to all three fields. Temple fly to center, Aaron to left, and Musial to right. Since that time, no member of the National League team has hit a ball in the outfield. First pitch coming in to Roy McMillan is a curveball. It's outside ball one. McMillan, with a .246 batting average in the regular season, is in his second All-Star game, .667 batting average. Stands deep in the right-hand batter's box. Bunning with a fastball is over for a strike. One ball, one strike, with one out. American League, leading in the ball game. There's a swing and a fly ball hit into right center field. Mickey Mantle jogs over to his left a few steps. Still moving over. He's got it. Round number two. So young Mr. Bunning has disposed of the first eight men to face him. Lou Burdett, the pitcher, is due up there now. And we'll have to check and see whether... Yep, Mr. Burdett is going to hit for Mr. Burdett. Burdett is, uh, like many pitchers in baseball, a pretty good man with a bat. He bats as he throws on the right side. Jim Bunning with two out, working in the last of the third inning. He is ready, and he fires a fastball. It's swung on, lined it deep in the center field. Mickey Mantle on his horse, moving way back out there, and he grabs it. So, Lou Burdett, first ball swinging. Complete the cycle, and the first nine men to face Jim Bunning go down in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. And at the end of the third inning, the score is American League 2 and the National League nothing. Fans uh, talking among themselves now, which is one of the glorious parts of baseball, is that everybody has an opportunity to uh, swap uh, their own ideas of what makes a good ball player, what makes a good pitch and a good hit. And uh, they're all chatting now as we move into the top half of the fourth inning with the American League holding to a 2 to nothing lead. American League scored their two runs in the second inning on a single by Mickey Mantle, a walk to Williams, a single by Wirtz that brought Mickey Mantle home, a walk to Barra, and uh, they got their second run when Lou Burdett came on in relief of Kurt Simmons, issued a pass to Harvey King. And after that, uh, Mr. Burdett was equal to the occasion getting Nellie Fox. American League threatened in the third with a single by Al Kaline, but Mantle, Williams, and Wirtz went down in order. The National Leaguers have not yet represented a scoring threat. They have been retired in order. So Lou Burnett now will face Yogi Berra here in the top of the fourth inning. Yogi walked in the second inning. This is the tenth All-Star game for Yogi, a great favorite here of St. Louis fans, where he not only enjoys playing, but where he saw many happy moments as a young man. Straight call. Downfield pull to the right. Here's the windup by the right-hander, and the pitch comes down, swung on, and line foul out in the bullpen. Billy Lowe is out there loosening up. Moves over to retrieve that one. 
Frank Malzon, the third baseman from the Boston Red Sox, loosening up in the bullpen, along with Bill Scowron, the first baseman from the Yankees. And Billy Lowe's apparently is going to be the second pitcher for the American League. Two strikes. Yogi Berra. Pitched by Burdett. The Yogi swung on. Line foul. Rolling down the first base line again and goes out to the bullpen. Gentleman leaning over the railing has himself another souvenir. So Yogi, who is known as one of the better bat ball hitters, who can chop one over his head and put it in the seats, or one down on the ground and put it in the seat, stands up there. Two-strike pitch by Burdett comes down outside, a fastball. One ball, two strikes. Great hospitality of the wonderful city of St. Louis being extended here for this all-star game. And the baseball fever is really high. Outside for ball two. As Burdett tried a change-up curveball on Barra, but it hung outside. Two and two. Barra, Cal, and a batter for Jim Bunning is the order. Ready to work now is the right-hander. Here's the 2-2 pitch coming down to Barra. Pops it up. Over near the stands goes the catcher, Bailey. He waves off Musial, and over near the railing of the dugout, he grabs it. So Barra fouls to Ed Bailey. Bailey looking up into the sun. Motion for Stan Musial to stand off. But he felt he might have a chance for it, and Musial coming in would have to be looking up into the sun. Here's George Cal. He fouled to the first baseman, Stan Musial's last time up. Cal, a busy worker with that bat, strokes it, Burdett comes down. Here's a fly ball hit in the left center field. Lots of room for Frank Robinson to move under, and he does, and he has it. Wynn carried that ball a little away from him, and he almost uh, misjudged it, but maybe just wanted to give the fans a little extra thrill. Two out in the fourth inning, and we're going to have Charlie Maxwell of the Detroit Tigers bat for Jim Bunning. Maxwell, in the pregame batting practice, hit three over the top of the right center field wall. Charlie, with the Detroit Tigers, is batting in the regular season, 277, has 18 home runs. Takes a strike, fastball over the inside corner. Maxwell has a very close stance, his right foot up close to the plate, swings around it. Outfield pulls to the right. Two up, top of the fourth. Pitch to him is too low. One ball, one strike. Charlie is from Tupaw, Michigan. Paw Paw. Aaron backed up in right field. The wind up in the 1 1 delivery is a fastball too low. Ball two. Two balls and one strike. American Leaguers have two runs on three hits. They have left four men on the bases. 2 1 pitch comes down to Charlie Maxwell. A ground ball to the right side. Breaking to his left is Johnny Temple. The ball squirts off his glove, goes out into right field. Temple had to break over to his left. It's a base hit for Charlie Maxwell. And that is the fourth hit for the American Leaguers. Second hit off Luber Dett. That was one of those ground grippers that did not come up. And as Johnny Temple broke over for the ball, it squirted off the heel of his glove and rolled out into right field. Batter now at the top of the order, Harvey Keene. The pitch by Burdett swung on and missed on a good fastball. Outfield is straight away for Harvey. Harvey also swings over a close stance, right hand batter. As I think the smallest feet among ball players. Curveball fouls it. Two strikes. Umpire Frank Descoli takes a good look at that ball to make sure that there's no scuff marks on it. Pops it right back in Ed Bailey's mitt. He pops it right back out to Lou Burdett. Oh, there's two out. Runner at first base. We're in the top of the fourth inning. American League two, National League nothing. Check of the runner at first. The pitch to Keene. Swung on. Fouled over near the stands. Musial digging over there. Over there, leaning against the box seats. Can't get it. Way up in the crowd. 
Musial really moves quickly, coming down and over near the stands. And with a ball player of his great reputation and record, it illustrates perhaps one of the basic principles of baseball is the hustle. Love of the game. Left side of the infield backed up for the National Leaguers. Two strikes to count. Luberdet with a little rosin. Stan Musial holding against the runner, Charlie Maxwell. He edges away. The pitch to Keene. Swung on. Popped up the left side. And the third baseman, Don Hoke, shades his eyes as he moves in on the infield grass, and he's got this one. So in the fourth inning, no runs, one hit. There were no errors, and one man left on. And at the end of three and a half innings of play, or as we sometimes say, the middle of the fourth inning, the score is American League 2, the National League nothing. We have some changes now for the American League. Frank Malzahn moves in at third base. Gil McDougal goes to shortstop. Bill Scowron goes to first base. And the pitcher from the Baltimore Orioles will be Billy Lowe. Billy is no stranger to these National Leaguers since he came over to the Baltimore Orioles from the Brooklyn Dodgers. And Billy's had himself a good year. He's 1-9 while losing four with a 2.84 earned run average. He's ready now, and he is pitching to the second baseman for the National League All-Stars, Johnny Temple, who fouls the first pitch off. So Bill Scourin, a right-hander, is playing first base for the American League. Nellie Fox remains at second. Gil McDougall of the American League Yankees at shortstop, and Malzahn of the Boston Red Sox at third. Here's the wind-up by Lowe's. The pitch is swung on, line foul, out in the right field seats. Millie Lowe's, who pitched so well for the Brooklyn Dodgers and then came up with what many people thought was a rather serious arm injury, went to Baltimore and has come back this year very strong for the Orioles. Two-strike delivery is on its way, and it's strike three call. He broke a slider over the outside corner. So Lowe's gets the first man to face him in the last of the fourth inning, Johnny Temple. And the batter now is Hank Aaron. Right-hand batter against the right-hand pitching Billy Lowe's. Apparently, the batting order will remain the same for the American League. Pitch to Hank Aaron, a fastball over the outside corner above the knee, strike one. Which would mean that McDougal would lead off in place of Harvey Keene. Billy Lowe's looks into Yogi Berra, hangs the sign down for him. He reads it, and he's ready to work. Pitch to Hank Aaron, a curveball, just missed the corner, one on one. Slow curve. Scourin will bat in Wirtz's spot. Malzahn will bat in George Kell's spot. And naturally, Billy Lowe's will bat in Bunning's spot. Here's the 1-1 delivered Aaron. A fastball that's too low. Two balls and one strike. Which means that McDougal will bat in the number one spot. Scourin will bat in the number one, two, three, four, five, six spot. And Malzahn will bat in the number eight spot. Two balls, one strike. The batter, Hank Aaron. The right-hander, Lowe's, delivers. Fastball, a ground ball back to second. Nellie Fox moves over. He can't make the play. Ball stuck in his glove, and he couldn't dig it out. It's a base hit. That is the first base hit for the National League. And Sam Musial comes up there. Jim Bunning, who worked the first three innings for the American League, did not allow a base hit, struck out one, did not walk a batter, and retired the first nine members of the National League All-Stars to face him. So with one out, batter is Stan Musio. First pitch by Lowe's, outside, ball one. Musio is last time up. Hit a fly ball in the right field. Swings and misses. One ball, one strike. Well, a lot of folks came to see that this is a big football game. So, fine drive off the wall out there. Right field. Moving back here and over to third. National League fans coming alive here in the last half of 
of the fourth inning. Early win, the knuckleballing fastballer right-hander for the Indians out there in the American League bullpen. Swung on and fouled over near the stands. Frank Malzone cannot get it. It's out of play. So it's one ball and two strikes to Willie. Willie, in his previous All-Star performance, has been a very dangerous batter. He had a 500 batting average going into today's game. This is his fourth All-Star game. Billy Lowe's, who remembers Willie, looking in for a sign from Yogi Berra. Hank Aaron moves down the line at third, leading away from second to Stan Musial. He'll outfield straight away. Here's the one-two pitch to Mays. Curveball, he goes fishing and checks his swing. And it's ball two. Willie started to go and then decided not to and held up just in time. Oh, Willie Mays steps out, breathes again, and steps back in. Then start to pick up the tempo. American League two, the National League nothing. Last the fourth, a pitch to Mays, a fastball outside. Ball three, three and two now. So Lowe's picks up a little rosin. Frank Malzone backed up at third. McDougal deep at short. Musial, a base runner at second, leads away. Aaron, a fast man, moves off third. Bobby Bregan coaching down there. A 3-2 wind-up, and a payoff pitch comes down. Swung on, popped up to the right side of the infield. Nelly Fox calls for it. Moves in one step off the edge of the infield grass. He's got it. So for the next link, there's two out. As Mays pops to Nelly Fox. And it brings up the ever-dangerous Ed Bailey. Bailey comes up in a situation where I'm sure the American League strategist would not like to have him come up because he's looking for his first all-star hit. Last time up, he bounced out second to first. The outfield now pulls it out to the right with the center fielder Mickey Mantle in right center. Deep and right is Al Keyline. First pitch is low and inside, ball one. Early win continues to work out there in the American League bullpen. Pitch to Bailey, a swing and a miss. One ball and one strike. Lowe's took a little off that pitch. Bailey out ahead of it. Bailey crossed over the plate. Here's the pitch by Lowe's. A curveball inside low. Yogi Farrell loses it for a moment, but not far enough for Hank Karen to move down. So the count, two balls, one strike. Every pitch now can be a most important one. And Magic Casey Stengel's doing a little pacing. He has won only one out of six All-Star performances, and it's something that Casey doesn't like. Big hole open in left center field. The pitch to Bailey. Curveball. Around the right side. Grabbed by Scourin, and he trots over and steps on first. A big offer to Bill Scourin, and that's all for the National League in the fourth inning. So in the fourth for the National League, no runs, two hits, no errors, and two men left on. And at the end of the fourth inning, the score, American League two, the National League nothing. Time for the fifth inning moves on now in this 24th All-Star game on July 9th, 1957. And Nelson Fox, the second baseman for the Chicago White Sox, will be the first man up. is ready, and the right-hander comes with a fastball. It's grounded down to the first baseman. Stan Musial grabs it, steps on first. Fine play again by Musial. Fox bounces out. Musial unassisted. One away. Matter now for the American League is Al Kaline. He has one hit and two times at bat. The outfield for the National League playing straight away for him. Mays shades over two steps to the left. Pitch by Burdett is a sidearm curveball outside and low ball one. K-Line stands about three quarters deep in that right-hand batter's box. Got the bat right on the end. Wind up by Burdett in one ball pitch. Fastball outside and low ball two.
Frank Robinson deep in left field. McMillan deep at short. And Hope playing away from third. Ready to work now is the right-hander. The two-ball pitch is swung on. A fly ball hit into right field. Starting out is Aaron. Turns and comes back in. He waits. He's got it. Now number two in the fifth inning. American League leading two to nothing with two out in the top of the fifth. And it brings up Mickey Mantle. Mantle picked up his base hit one and two times at bat today, batting from the right side when he chopped a roller down the third baseline and liked it. And batting from the left side in the third inning, he popped up. The outfield pulls to the right for him and deep. Right side of the infield also backed up. Burdett into his wind-up pitch to Mantle. Swings and slices it foul over the top of the roof. Back of third base. Strike one. Lou Burdett looking into Ed Bailey once again. You know, looking around the faces here of the great fans of St. Louis, this is really a happy town. Everybody loves their baseball. Curveball is long inside. Of course, the fact that the Cardinals are leading the National League uh, race hasn't hindered those smiles, at least. One ball, one strike. Burdett taking his time, starts into his windup. Feeds the 1 1 pitch to Mantle. Takes low and outside ball two. Aragon League two, National League nothing. Burdett is a very busy pitcher. He moves the dirt out from the rubber. He gets a little rosin. Keeps moving around. Mantle also keeps moving around as he waits. Feeds him on the 2-1 pitch, and he swings on this one, drives it out in the left field. Backing up is Frank Robinson, pounds the glove, moves in two, three steps, he's got it. So the fifth inning for the American League, they go down in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. And so at the middle of the fifth inning, the score is American League 2, the National League nothing. Now it's my pleasure to turn you over to the voice of the St. Louis Cardinals, who will carry you through the second half of the All-Star Game. A very fine broadcaster, Harry Carey. Bottom half of the fifth inning. Two to nothing in favor of the American League. There's a little switch down on the field, too. Frank Gascoli, who worked the first half of the ball game behind the plate, now goes down to work on the bases. And uh, Nestor Shylock continues to work on the right field far line. Stan Landis is working the left field far line, but John Stevens now has moved in to work behind the plate, he being in the American League. Frank Ascoli takes over at third base, replacing Stevens. The other two umpires are Larry Knapp at first base and Hal Dixon at second base, and we have quite a ball game going on. Here's Frank Robinson to lead off against Billy Lowe's, the first pitch. It's a fastball, low and outside. Robinson bounced out his first time up in this ball game. 21-year-old young was the rookie of the year last season and is doing equally as well in his second year with the Cincinnati Reds. Right-handed batter with good power. They play him straight away and deep. Into the windup is Lowe's. The pitch, the curveball swung, the fly ball in the center field. Mantle gets a slow start, cuts in fast, can't make the play. It's a base hit. Frankie Robinson holds on at first base. Mickey Mantle was pulled a little bit by the sound. He thought the ball was hit harder than it was. It was a looper in front of him. He had started back. Had it come hard but couldn't reach it. So there's a life for the National Leaguers as Frank Robinson loops one in the short right center. And the strong boy of Milwaukee, Eddie Matthews, will come out now as a pinch hitter. Batting for Don Hook. Eddie Matthews of the Milwaukee Braves. 26 years old, tremendous power. Trying to take advantage of the short right field porch here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. It's a beautiful day. The crowd has been more or less relaxed and contented. For the first half of the ball game, there haven't been too many fireworks. I was witnessed the fact that the scoring inning of the American League started with an infield hit by what is otherwise a bomber, Mickey Mantle. So, Matthews gets a nice hand from the crowd, steps into that batter's box. Tremendous physique, this guy. He can hit the ball the proverbial country mile. Left-handed batter. The stretch by Billy Lowe's. The pitch on the way. He started the swing. He held up the curveball. Was in there anyhow. 
John Stevens now working behind the plate. A left-hander warming up in the bullpen now for the American League. Don Mossy of the Cleveland Indians. There's the stretch by Lowe's. The pitch to Matthews. The fastball is low. The count is evened up. Around the infield, it's Malzoni of the Red Sox at third base. Gil McDougal of the Yankees at shortstop. Little Nelly Fox of the White Sox at second base. And Bill Scourin of the Yankees at first base. Yogi Berra behind the plate and Billy Lowe's on the mound. Into the stretch, a lead by Frank Robinson. The pitch to Matthews. Slung. High top foul back. Will it stay in play? No. Out of play for a strike. Two strikes on the ball. Bottom half of the fifth inning. The National Leaguers, of course, the home team here. The ball game being played at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Eddie Matthews batting for Don Hope. Hope bounced out the only time that he was up there. Matthews has never had a hit in an all-star game. This is his fourth. There's the stretch by Billy Lowe's. The pitch on the way. High outside, half speed pitch, and the count is evened up. Two balls and two strikes. A runner at first base, Frank Robinson. Nobody out. The score two to nothing. The American League leads. Bottom half of the fifth inning. The outfield plays Matthews to pull. They're very deep. There's the stretch, two two pitch on the way. Slow curve, slung. A bullet, a low line drive, and a right field, a base hit. But Robinson is going to be forced at second base. He thought that K line was going to catch the ball. can throw that Pelota. He threw a low line drive into second base. He fielded the low line drive and a short hop. Frank Robinson was going the other way back towards first. McDougal took the throw for an easy force play. And Eddie Matthews has the distinction of hitting a whistling low line drive single to right. Only to be credited only with a force out. There's a rare play. Here's Arnie Banks batting for McMillan. The first pitch is a curve. Strike call. A real strange play. That K-line with those tremendously good reflexes that come with youth charged that low liner, scooped it up on the pickup, and fired to McDougal for a force-off. The pitch to the right-hand batting banks is low and outside. The tempo is certainly picked up here in a hurry. One ball and one strike. Ernie Banks. This is fifth year in the major leagues of his third All-Star game. He hasn't had a hit yet, but only batted twice. There's the stretch. The pitch on the way by Lowe. Swung and he missed and he really had a good cut as he went around and around. Two strikes on the ball. Banks for the season batting 257. He's had 15 homers for the Cubs. Drove in 43 runs. Right hand batter straddles that plate. Here's the stretch by Billy Lowe's. Now the pitch. Swung. Hot shot on the ground. Might be a double play. Now only up. Over to second one. Fox to first. Double play. The inning is over. Ernie Banks, batting for Roy McMillan, grounded sharply into a double play. Around the corner from Malzoni to Fox to Scour. So the National Leaguers had a great chance, but they wind up with one hit and no runs, no errors, and nobody left on base. So, at the end of five full innings, the score here, the American League two and the National League nothing. The umpires, Frank Dascoli, from third base, has walked down the left field line to chew the fat a wee bit with an old running mate, Stan Landis. It's a game of day here in St. Louis. This is the third appearance of the All-Star Game. First one to be played at Bush Stadium. Previously, you know, this was Sportsman's Park. Ernie Banks now takes over at shortstop. Jack Sanford of the Phillies, hard-throwing right-hander, will be the pitcher. At third base, Eddie Matthews has replaced Don Hoke, from whom he batted. Lou Burdett had the rather rare distinction in my in the all-star game competition of pitching more than three innings. Inasmuch as he relieved, that's permissible. But the starting pitcher cannot go more than three innings. Burdett went four innings, allowed two hits and no runs. Walk one. That one walk forced in a run, but it was charged to starting pitcher Kurt Simmons, who in one inning, facing four men in the second, allowed two hits, walked two, and permitted two runs. 
Sheriff Ted Williams in a personal duel between two of the great stars of all time, Ted Williams and Stan Musial. At the moment, Williams has walked and bounced out, and Musial has doubled and flied out. Jack Sanford of the Phillies, hard throwing right hander. His first All Star game, the first pitch, and Williams, a left handed batter, takes a fastball outside. One ball and no strike. The outfield plays Williams, you know where. There's the pitch, swung, and he fouled it back. And boy, this guy, even when he fouls him, they sound like shots. Sanford has won 10 and lost 2 in a rookie year with a great earn run average for the Phillies of 3.12. He really fires that ball hard. A right-hander, the 1-1 one -one pitch on the way. Slow curve swung. Fly ball in the left center field. Robinson is there. Don't worry about it. It'll be an easy out. One guard. Williams fly to Frank Robinson in left field. Robinson, unfortunately, was a victim of a rare play, believing that Eddie Matthews' whistling low-line drive would be caught by K-Line. He headed back towards first base. And although the ball was trapped by K-Line, he was a victim of an easy force out. It could have been that hustling little Nelly Fox had something to do. Decoying, perhaps. Robinson, the first pitch now to Bill Scourin, batting for the first time of the ball game, is a strike call. Scourin, a right-handed batter. Good power. Star member of the Yankees, the pitch. Fastball drives him back. And the count is evened up. Scourin hitting 332 for the year with 13 homers. 60 RBI. Formerly of Purdue University. Here's a pitch on the way. Swung and he fouled tip. Strike two. Two strikes on the ball. Ed Bailey of Strawberry Plains, Tennessee, behind the plate. You know, the two towns I love are Strawberry Plains, Tennessee, and Vinegar Bend, Alabama. Here's a pitch swung on a drive deep to right field. Aaron is back near the wall. The ball might be on the screen. It is. Scarrett's headed for second base. Aaron's throw. He's in there sliding with a double. Bill Scourin made his presence in the lineup felt quickly with a line double off the right field screen just above the 322 foot mark. So the American Leaguers, with one out, have a man in scoring position. And Yogi Berra, who of course is the most popular of the American Leaguers here today, and as much as this is his hometown, St. Louis. He and my partner during the regular season of Cardinal Broadcast, Joe Garagiola, were born and raised right in the same block, played baseball together. Both, of course, made the major leagues. Here's a wild pitch on the first pitch, right over Bailey's head, and scour that goes to third base. One thing about it, Jack Sanford proved he didn't have any sore arm on that one. He threw it about five feet over Bailey's head, and with plenty on it. This kid is a hard throwing right hander. Great fastball, sharp curve. He came out of the service and uh, appeared in three games of the Phillies last year, and this year, in his full first year as a rookie, he's won 10 and lost two. He comes from Wellesley, Massachusetts. He's a six footer, 175 pounds. The infield now for the National League has to come in close. The pitch to Yogi. Curveball is high and inside. Two balls, no strike. Yogi walked in the second inning and fouled out to the catcher in the fourth. There's the windup of the pitch. And it swung. There's a line drive in the left field. That's a base hit and a run is in. Frank Robinson up with the ball. Yogi goes halfway down to second, turns around and comes back. Yogi Berra drives in a run, something that he has a penchant for doing. A line single in the left field. And here you've had a good example of what makes good major league hitters. Scour and a right-handed batter into the opposite field, doubled off the right field screen. There, a left-handed batter sliced a line drive to the opposite field, left field, to drive in the run. Here now is the Red Sox fine youngster, Frank Malzoni. Right-handed batter, the pitch. It's a strike, a fastball right through there. Larry Jackson of the St. Louis Cardinals, along with Clint Levine of the Brooklyn Dodgers, now in the bullpen for the National League, who trail three to nothing. In the top of the six, the pitch swung, a high pop foul off to the right. Out of play into the stand. There's a souvenir for somebody. Whoa, they fumbled it upstairs. <laughs> and a man with a scarlet red sports shirt has the souvenir. Downstairs. He didn't expect that one. 
Two strikes and no balls. The runner at first, one out, one in. Here's the pitch. Swung. Bouncing ball. Might be two. Banks in fast. Fields. Throws to second. That's the only play they can get. Malzoni forces out Vera. From Banks to Temple. That's two out. Brings up Billy Lowe's, the pitcher. Here's quite a story. A refugee, let's say, from the National League. A fine young pitcher with the Brooklyn Dodgers who developed arm trouble. Picked up by Baltimore. And with that magician over there, Paul Richards, he once again has found his stuff and is one of the outstanding pitchers of baseball. Right-handed batter, here's the pitch by Sanford. Curve swung, bouncing ball over the pitcher's head, banks in fast, fields and throws. The inning is over. Billy Rose bounces out from Banks to Musia. Two hits, one run. No errors, one left. So, the score at the middle of the sixth inning. The American League, three. The National League, nothing. 30,693 paid. Gross receipts, $122,027. The chair, not for those statistics in dollars and cents, but rather for a favorite here in St. Louis, Wally Moon, graduate of Texas A&M, star outfielder of the St. Louis Cardinal, left-handed pinch hitter of the moment. First pitch by Lowe's curveball low and outside. The National League trailing three to nothing. Wally Moon is batting as a pinch hitter here. Now the line, Billy Lowe's ready, the pitch. Strike, a fastball hit that outside court. One ball, one strike. Lou Burnett replaced Kurt Simmons. There's the windup of the pitch. Here's a fastball foul back to the screen. Two strikes and a ball. Wally Moon hitting... For pitcher Jack Sanford, who replaced Lou Burdett, who replaced starter Kurt Simmons. So the National Leaguers will be having their fourth pitcher, and it'll be a Cardinal, Larry Jackson. Wally Moon, the pitcher to the windup by Lowe's, the pitch. Slow curve, swung a ground ball to the second baseman. Fox over to his left, up throws, he's on. Wally Moon batting for Sanford. Rolls up. Now... One of the great stars of the National League down through these recent years, more than a decade, Fred Shady. A great favorite one with the Cardinals, a great favorite with the New York Giants, a great favorite now with the Milwaukee Braves, and of course, ever popular in these parts. Fred Shady's batting for Johnny Temple. 34-year-old veteran infielder, bats left-handed, lows pitch, swung. High fly ball in the right field, deep K-line way back near the wall. Jones strikes the catch. Holy cow, what a play. And the K-line goes to the right field wall, leaps high into the air, and pulls that one in. This K-line has played right field as if he were a shortstop. He's gone to his right, he's gone to his left, he's come in, he's gone back, and he has shown a rifle arm. I don't know what more a right fielder can do. In other words, fans, he is an all-star. Here's Henry Aaron now, at 23, the National League's leading hitter last season and again this year. Today, He's had one out of two for the afternoon. The pitch by low, slow curve, low and outside, ball one. One ball and no strikes, two out. Bottom half of the sixth inning. Three to nothing in favor of the American League, although I notice the scoreboard has failed to give them their other run up there. One ball, no strike. The pitch on the way, swung and fouled off to the right. And the count is evened up. The scoreboard's got a zero for the American League and a six. But don't let it fool you. They earned that run. And it'll be in the box score. Early win now winding up in the bullpen for the American League. Here's a pitch to Aaron. Swung! And he missed. A high fastball outside. Two strikes on the ball. That scoreboard man must be a National Leaguer, friends. Doesn't want to give the American League the run they made in the top of the sixth. He's already put the National League half of the sixth up now at zero. Here's the pitch on the way. Aaron breaks a bat as he taps one to Lowe's. That's going to be an easy out. Over to first. The inning is over. This American League pitching has been superb. One, two, three. Nothing across. 
true at the end of six innings. The score remains the American League three, the National League nothing. Larry Jackson of the St. Louis Cardinals is the new National League pitcher. Red Shandy to the Milwaukee Braves is the new second baseman. But the score is an old one. The American Leaguers three and the National League nothing. Moving into the top half of the seventh inning. Here's Gil McDougal to lead off. Larry Jackson, 26-year-old right-hander from Mountain Idaho. First pitch, here it is. Fastball in there. This is right. The American League was his first run that RBI for Yogi Berra was his first in nine All-Star games. The information just been passed along. Here's a pitch to McDougal, and he swings and foul tips for strike two. Two strikes and no ball. Nobody on, nobody out. Top half of the seventh inning, this All-Star game, the 24th is moving along rapidly. Capacity crowd on hand in a limited ballpark as the paid attendance is slightly better than 30,000 would indicate. They had over 100,000 requests for tickets for this game here in St. Louis. Had a return over 100,000. Two strikes and no ball. Larry Jacks into the windup. Here's the pitch to Gil McDougal. And it's a curve, low and outside. This McDougal would have to be one of the greatest infielders of all time. I can't think of any other infielder who's played third base on a world champion, shortstop on a world champion, second base on a world champion. He's done all that. Here's the pitch curve, swung, high pop foul off to the right out of play. That won't even be a souvenir unless it be for a photographer on the roof. Two strikes and a ball. Gil McDougal, 28 years old. One of the more unpublicized stars. Here's the pitch fastball swung right back to the pitcher. He's got it. Jackson over to first. Easy out. I mentioned Joe Garagiola, former Major League catcher. Joe, uh, how about this ball game at this point? Quite a ball game, Harry, although I've trained my eyes on these coaches. You know, I've got a phobia for trying to steal signs, and it makes it for more interesting watching. And this uh, Frankie Crossetti is using a flash set of signs, but uh, as right now, I can't say I have them. One man out here, they pitched to Nelly Fox. Swung on and bounced ball off to the right strike one. Where this little fella gets all the energy, I don't know. He's just 160 pounds, 5'10", 29 years old. He was born on Christmas Day. Maybe that explains it all. He's certainly some great ball player. Spark plug of the White Sox. Here's the pitch by Jackson. The little left-hand hitter bounces a ground ball. The Museal steps on the bag. Easy out. Two up and two down against Jackson. Here's Al Kaline, who uh, I think has been the outstanding star this afternoon. The crowd uh, must feel that way, too. They give him a nice hand as he steps to the plate. Al Kaline of the Detroit Tigers. Gee, the influx of youngsters in the major leagues in recent years has certainly been tremendous. Here's the pitch to Kaline, and the fastball is under a strike off. For example, here's Kaline at 22. He's a veteran. A graybeard. On the Cardinals, we have a youngster, 18, Von McDaniel, and 121, Lindy McDaniel. Here's the pitch foul back, and he really had a cut at that one. He wanted to turn from a defensive star to an offensive one on that swing of the bat. Al Kaline from Baltimore, Maryland. This is fifth year with the Tigers at the age of 22. Got a bonus of about 35000 I guess that's been returned many times over to the Detroit management. Here's the pitch. Curveball low and outside. Two strikes on the ball to count two out. Around the National League infield, it's Eddie Matthews at third base, Ernie Banks at shortstop. Red Shane Deast at second base and Stan Musial at first. Bailey behind the plate, Jackson Wines, the pitch. Fastball swung on, a looper foul, out of reach of everybody except an usher, who feels the ball on the run and tosses it back, and the fans pull him. <laughs> they think he should let the ball roll because it might have bounced into the stands and somebody else would have had a souvenir. Two strikes and a ball. That by play is part of this strangely fascinating drama that they call baseball. Two strikes and a ball. Two out. Larry Jackson takes his time. Tall, rangy, handsome youngster. There's a pitch on the way to K-Line. Fastball a little bit low. Ball two. Two balls and two strikes. Larry Jackson has a rather unique occupation during the winter. He's a sports writer. Writes a column out there in Boise, Idaho. Two balls and two strikes. 
Here's the windup on the pitch. Curveball just missed low. Three balls and two strikes to us. Al Kaline. The star right fielder of the Detroit Tigers and the star right fielder of the American League All-Stars today. Boy, that guy's covered that right field like a tent. There's the windup. Three balls and two strikes. The pitcher on the way, and here it is. Swung, line shot to Musi on the leap. Comes down with the ball. K-line, lines hard to Musi. One, two, three. Nothing across. This ball game rolling right along. So, in the middle of the seventh inning, the score. American League, three. National League, nothing. This is Harry Carey again, friends, from Bush Stadium in St. Louis. And Stan Musi to lead off here against Early Win. A big right-hander. Star pitcher of the Cleveland Indians. There's the windup. The broad-shouldered right-hander fires to Stan Musial, and the curveball is in there, a strike call. Win has won 11 and lost 10. His earned run average isn't as good as it usually is. Bob Neal just points out to me, four runs, point two. 11 and 10 is record for the year with the Indians, the pitch. Low and outside, broke like a knuckleball, and the count is evened up. One ball and one strike. Musial doubled off the right field screen in the fourth. That's one of the few occasions this crowd has had to roar for the National League. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch on the way now by Wynn. Curveball swung and drive, going deep in the right center, but Mantle is over there. He'll make the play. He's got the ball. He'll see a line hard to Mickey Mantle in right center. Strange, with all these sluggers and the wind blowing towards the short right field fence, nobody's in the home run as yet. In fact, the ball game so far has been more or less turned on a break and a short lapse of control. That is, if you could call Mickey Mantle's tremendous speed a foot of break. He beat out a slow roller in the second to start a two-run inning. Here's Willie Mays. One out. He's been hitless. The pitch by early win. Curveball, and he missed it. Strike one. He had a cut, but he missed it plenty. Wim fooled him on that one. Early win. 37 years old. Throws a good knuckleball, good fastball, good curve. Here's the pitch. High fastball. One ball, one strike. One man up. Willie Mays was out on strikes in the second inning, popped up in the fourth. Three to nothing, the American League leads. Ball game in the seventh inning. There's the windup by Wynn, the pitch on the way. Here it is. Curve swung foul back to the screen. Two strikes on the ball. The National Leaguers have had only three hits. A double and a single by Aaron in the fourth. And then Billy Lowe's really settled down, got Mays to pop up and Bailey to ground up. And a leadoff single by Frank Robinson in the fifth. Then he needed the break of the ball game, which he got on that low line drive that Matthews hit, which turned into a force play. Here's the pitch, the curve, foul tipped. Two strikes in the ball. Willie Mays. The amazing Mays. Perhaps the most exciting ball player to come along in a long, long time. Two strikes in the ball. There's early win set. Very deliberately, he pumps the pitches on the way. Outside and high, and the count is evened up. They say about Mays that he can beat you more ways than anybody else now in baseball. With his feet, great base stealer. He's stolen 23 bases or so already. With his bat, with his glove, and with his arm. There aren't many more ways. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch on the way. Curve swung, a hot shot. Left field, makes it. Willie Mays rounds sharply in the left. So there's a base hit off of early win. Billy Lowe's worked a very fine middle three innings, allowed three hits and no runs. Jim Bunning, the youngster from the Detroit Tigers, has been the outstanding pitcher so far. He retired nine men in a row. Three perfect innings. And Billy Pierce, whom we were talking about a few moments ago. Yes, sir, he's down in the bullpen now, getting ready, just in case. Here's F. Bailey. Good power, left-handed batter, short right field porch here. The wind blowing out. Wind from the belt. The pitch to Bailey. Curveball inside. One ball and no strikes. The outfield plays Bailey to full. Malzoni, the third baseman, is very wide of the bag. McDougal, the shortstop, is near the sack, right through the middle. Nelly Fox plays him the pull way around towards first. Scourin is right behind the bag. There's the stretch. Now the pitch to Bailey. He 
start of the swing, he held up the fastball and went low and inside. And Yogi Berra made a nice play. Yogi can't help but remark about his catching. Now, uh, facing pitchers who aren't strange when he's with a bat in his hands, the opposition, but who might be strange as far as handling their pitches. And he's done a magnificent job. 2 nothing pitch to Bailey. Here it is. Inside, ball three. Three balls and no strike. And the National League fans here come to life a little bit. The American Leaguers have been out in front with great pitching and timely hitting. Three balls and no strike. There's the stretch. Win is ready. The pitch now to Ed Bailey. And it's right down the pike of fastball. Three balls and a strike. Bailey, 26 years old. Big guy, 200 pounds. Straddles that plate wide. He gets hold of one, of course. He's got great power. Who in these lineups doesn't have? Three balls and a strike. Now the pitch on the way. Strike two. He snapped off a good curveball at the knees. Over the outside corner. As Joe Gargiola often says, that's the pitch that sent him into the radio booth. <laughs> the curveball over the outside corner. Now the 3 2 pitch. Here it is. Curveball hit hard on the ground into right field. A base hit. Here Faze around second. He's on his way to third. K line. Fires into second base. Nelly Fox made a gallant effort. Dove headlong and got the fingertips on the ball, but couldn't hold it. So, the National Leaguers now have runners at first and third on successive singles with one out by Hayes and Bailey. And here's another Cincinnati player, Gus Bell, the star center fielder of the Red Legs, batting for a teammate, Frank Robinson. As manager Walter Austin of the National League goes now for the percentage of left-hand batter against right-hand pitcher with a short right field fence against the long one in left. The tying run will be at the plate. There's one out. Gus Bell, the hitter. Warren Spahn now warming up in the bullpen for the National League. The great left-hander of the Braves. The infield, of course, plays back for the double play. Bell at the plate. There's the stretch by early win. Now the pitch on the way. Swung, and he missed the curveball. Boys, he had a home run cut at that one. Gus Bell, this is his fourth All-Star game. He's hit 205 times at bat. Left-handed hitter with power. Originally from Louisville, Kentucky, now makes his home in Cincinnati, where he's a popular favorite. One strike and no ball. Runners at first and third, three to nothing in favor of the American League. Early win into the stretch from the belt. The pitch to the left-handed batter is on the way. Gets outside and the count evens up. One ball and one strike. One out. Runners at first and third were in the bottom of the seventh inning. Bob Sheffing, manager of the Cubs, coaching at first. Bobby Bragan, manager of the Pirates, coaching at third. The outfield plays Bell to pull that ball. Now early win, a very deliberate worker. Goes into the stretch. Hesitates the belt. And the pitch now to Gus Bell. Here it is. Swung and he missed a shot breaking curveball or knuckler. Something that dipped down quickly. Casey Stengel came out to the top step of the American League dugout. Pointed and shouted some observation to his infield. Two strikes on the ball. Gus Bell. The National League has had one previous good chance. This is the only other one. As the American League pitching has been invincible to this point. Two strikes on the ball. The stretch. Now the pitch. High outside fastball. Wynn is moving the ball around on Bell. Goes outside and breaks the curveball inside. Both pitches that he has missed are fouled on this 2-2 sequence have been curveballs right in on the handle. Two balls and two strikes. The breeze blows out to right. That could be an important factor with a left-handed batter. Now early win is ready. Two balls, two strikes. He's the tying run at the plate. There's the delivery. Swung, pop foul back, out of play. 
into the upper deck. Bright sunshine here in St. Louis. It's a beautiful baseball day. Didn't look like it would be earlier, but the weatherman proved that he loves the All-Star game and baseball also. And he's out in his fullest glory at the moment. Two balls, two strikes, two on, one out. The America League leading three to nothing. Gus Bell waits. Early win. From the belt. The 2-2 pitch. Very deliberate. Here it is on the way. Swung. Hot foul back out of play. And the count. Still even up at 2-2. Two two. This perhaps is the tensest moment of this ball game. As the American League's 3 to nothing lead may be in jeopardy. Gus Bell at the plate. Bill Scourin plays halfway at first base, taking the defense, not holding the runner on at first, so he'll be in position to feel any ball hit down that way. Two balls, two strikes. Bailey takes advantage of that position by taking a longer lead. Now from the belt. The pitch on the way. Swung and he fouled it back, and that's the best cut he's had. He really had a good ripple that time. Billy Pierce and Don Mossy are down in the bullpen for the American League. And Warren Spahn for the National League. Spahn of the Braves, Mossy of the Indians, and Billy Pierce, of course, the darling of the White Sox. Two balls, two strikes. Early win gets set. Infield talks it up the old pepper. Now the pitch to Bell. Very delivered. Here it is. On the way. Swung. A drive deep to left field. Way back. One run will be in at the base hit. Extra bases. Here's the second man going to try to score. He'll make it. Here's Bell pulling up at second base with a double. Gus Bell of the Cincinnati Reds. After a long duel with early win. Hit him to the opposite field. He thrilled a line drive into the left field corner. Scoring Mays from second, Bailey from first. Now it's a 3-2 to two ball game, and a roar of excitement has gone through this big crowd. Here's Casey Stengel, the great manager of the Yankees and of the American League now, coming out to talk to Yogi Berra. An early win. The situation is this. The tying run is at second. There's only one out. The score being 3-2 to two American League over the National League. Eddie Matthews, a left-handed batter, will be at the plate. And a southpaw pitcher is going to be brought in here to face him. Billy Pierce, the little left-hander at the Chicago White Sox. Billy Pierce. Pierce will relieve here. And for one of the key situations of the ball game. The American Leaguers certainly have one of the outstanding performers of the game. Billy Pierce. This is the, his 11th year in the majors. This is his fourth all-star team. His earned run average is one run for nine innings. A left-handed pitcher, a little guy whose size can fool you. Joe, uh, just a moment here. As a, a former ball player, it looked like they got the early win there. Uh, it was any particular pitch that they were hitting. Uh, he was trying to make uh, Gus Bell hit a curveball. He was trying to keep it in on his hands. Uh, Gus is one of the best fastball hitters in the National League. You could see that Wynn was trying to make him hit a curveball, something down where he would hit the ground ball for the double play. Uh, you notice he didn't try to nibble when he got to two strikes and two balls, uh, as he didn't want to run the town to three and two where they could start the man off first base. Looked like he tried to get that fastball by him, and Gus just wouldn't let him do it and hit the ball into left field, of course, which is a good spot for him because the American League was full wing around playing him the pull, and rightly so because. He is known as a fastball hitter and a pull hitter. Billy Pierce of the Chicago White Sox, a Detroit, Michigan boy. 30 years old now. Boy, what years he's had for the White Sox. 20 and 9 last year, 15 and 10 the year before. Then he had a bad one, 9 and 10 the year before that. 18 and 12, 15 and 12, 15 and 14, 12 and 16. White Sox got him in a trade for catcher Aaron Robinson back in 1948. 
I don't know how Frank Lane, who was the general manager of the White Sox, ever made that one. That was picking up about a million dollars, I guess. Because Pierce has really done a job for Chicago. Now he's got to do one for the American League, because here is Eddie Matthews, a long ball hitter. He represents the lead run at the plate. Only one out. The pitch swung, and he missed the curveball. And he really broke one off. Sharp breaking curveball, and Eddie Matthews was swinging, but missed. Matthews batted as a pinch hitter in the fifth, got a hit that wasn't a hit. Here's the pitch, and it's low, a fastball. He had a low line drive in the right field with a runner at first that Al Kaline made a pickup of on. And with the runner confused, Frank Robinson, not knowing whether he caught it or not, Kaline turned the base into a force out. Now the 1 1 pitch swung. Bouncing ball to the first baseman, Scour, and here's the pitcher going to cover the toss. He's out. With Gus Bell taking third. Nice play from Scour to Pierce. And now the tiny one is at third base. So the Chicago Cubs. Who was the pinch hitter in the fifth? Bounced into a double play. Batting for the second time in the ball game. Ernie Banks, as I recall, hasn't had a hit. In an all-star game, this is only his third. He's only been to bat now three times. Right-handed batter, crouches low. Billy Pierce into the windup. Now the pitch on the way. Fastball is low. For a little guy, this Pierce can really fire that apple. Very classy pitcher. A picture pitcher, as it were. He does everything, follows through, delivers, as the good book says a good pitcher should. Now they deliver it. A little bit outside, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. He's pitching carefully here. The National League would use a pinch hitter next. Gino Samoli is crouching in the batter circle of the Brooklyn Dodgers. If Banks gets on, keeps the inning alive. Three to two, American League lead. Here's the windup and the pitch. There's a high drive deep into left field, twisting into foul territory, maybe. Ted Williams chasing it out of play. Foul ball. Ernie Banks trots back to the plate. Two balls and a strike. The National League, trailing three to nothing, has cut into that lead. With one out, May single, Bailey single to third. And Gus Bell, a pinch hitter, doubled both runners home. Bell now is at third base. One stop away from a tie score. But Billy Pierce trying to slam the door in the National League's face right here. Now the windup. Here's the pitch. Swung and he missed and he had a good cut. He went around and around. Two balls and two strikes. These two guys know each other well. Pierce from the White Sox, Banks from the Cubs. They play against each other in inner city series every year. Now the windup, 2-2 two, two pitch. Here it is. Swung and pop foul out of play. Back. Onto the roof. The count stays evened up, 2-2. Two and two. This was the kind of a situation, you know, that Gus Bell, dueled with early win, fouled off. 2-2 two, two pitch after 2-2 two, two pitch, and finally doubled into the left field corner, scoring two runs. Ernie Banks, from Dallas, Texas. Waits, crouches low, the windup by Pierce. Here's the pitch on the way. Swung on and pops, fouled, but back out of play. Yogi Berra turns his head, shades his eyes. Doesn't even take his mask off. Realizing that he was gone out of play. Two balls, two strikes. Now, John Stevens, the plate umpire, calls for time as Warren Spahn warming up in the left field corner with Cardinal Obi Landreth, who's the bullpen catcher, is selected by manager Walter Alston on this year's All Star team. Two balls, two strikes on Banks. Here's the windup by Pierce. Here's the pitch. Swung on and bounced foul on the third baseline to Bobby Bray. Fields the ball perfectly and tosses it back. Coaches usually look at the ball to see if the pitch has done anything to it, but Bragan must have implicit faith. He fielded that ball and quickly tossed it right back to Pierce. Two balls, two strikes. Now the windup. Here's the pitch on the way. Swung on and popped straight off. This one might stay in play. Yogi coming over to the stands. He doesn't have a play, so Banks will have another chance. 
Two balls, two strikes. Who's wearing out who here? Pierce against Banks. A fine pitcher, a tough hitter. And maybe the ball game at stake. The tying runs at third base. Two balls, two strikes. Ernie Banks, 6'1", 180 pounds. In the player's parlance, he's known as a wrist hitter. Snaps those wrists real good. Holds that bat high. Here's the 2-2 pitch on the way. Kerr, he struck him out. Ernie Banks missed the high curveball. And so it's three hits. Two runs. No errors. One left. And the score at the end of seven full innings, the American League three, the National League two. This is Harry Carey with Bob Neal here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis as we go into the top half of the eighth inning. The National League now has narrowed the margin. It's the American League three, the National League two. Larry Jackson will face Mickey Mantle, Ted Williams, and Bill Scourin here in the eighth inning. That's some facing. In left field now, we have Gus Bell as a replacement for Frank Robinson, for whom he pinch hit so successfully. Three to two, American League, we're in the top of the eighth inning. Well, we might be building up to a tremendous climax yet in this ball game, the way it's going. Two great ball clubs at each other's throats. Now Mantle. He beat out a hit in the second inning. He popped out to short in the third, and he flied out to left in the fifth. Batting left-handed against Larry Jackson. The first pitch. A little bit outside. A fastball, ball one. One ball and no strikes. Eddie Matthews at third, Banks at short. Red Shane East at second, Musial at first. In the outfield now, we have Gus Bell in left. Willie Mays in center. Hank Aaron in right. Ed Bailey all the way behind the plate. Here's a pitch. Fastball missed outside, ball two. Mickey Mantle. One of baseball's truly greats. This season, he's hitting 369 for the Yankees with 22 homers. Here's the pitch on the way. Ball three. High. Ball three. Three and nothing. You know, some of these fellas are such great hitters, everybody forgets their other virtues. Mantle is one of the fastest men in the history of baseball. 3 nothing pitch on the way. All four. He walked him. First pass given up by Jackson. Here is Ted Williams. He's walked and scored a run, bounced out to first, and flat out to left. Clem Levine has started to warm up in the bullpen for the National League. And Bob Grimm of the Yankees for the American League. Here's Williams, the stretch by Larry Jackson. The pitch. Fastball low and outside. One ball and Ostra. Williams, you know, hits out of a wide straddle. Tremendous leverage, being a big fella, 6'4". Can hit the ball out of the park in any field that you name. Left field, center field, right field. This year for the Red Sox, Williams is hitting 343 with 20 homers. One ball and no strikes from the belt. The pitch on the way. He started the swing. He tried to stop. The fast-breaking slider was in there for a strike call. One ball, one strike. Casey Stengel sitting out on the top step of the American League dugout. She's on the first base side. Oh, Case doesn't miss much. One ball, one strike. Pitch to Williams. Drive deep in the left center. Way back is Willie May. Still running back near the wall. Still going. He's got the ball. Fine play by Willie May. Well, I tell you. We only see him 22 times a year. With, as we broadcast the Cardinal games, you only play 22 games with each team. But that's enough to realize that as fine a play as that was, it's really routine for Willie. He 
only thing that keeps that guy from catching a ball, no matter how far it's hit, is the wall. Naturally, when it goes into the stands, there isn't much even he can do about it. Here now is Bill Scourin and the pitch. Swung on a bullet through the middle in the center. A base hit. Willie comes in fast up with the ball and holds Mantle to second base. Scourin gets his second straight hit. The Moose, as he's affectionately known, has had a double and a single. Now Larry Jackson is in the jam. The score three to two in favor of the American League. We're in the top of the eighth. And Yogi Berra will be the hitter. He drove in his first run in nine All-Star games with a single left off Sanford in the sixth. One gone. Clem Levine in the bullpen. The great Brooklyn relief pitcher. Yogi swinging two bats up there. Now he's discarded one, but it still looks like he's got two. That's how ominous he is up there. <laughs> Runners at first and second. The stretch pitch. He foul tipped. Strike one. He didn't have a good cut that time, as if he might have been fooled on the pitch. Foul tipped it with a half swing. One strike and no ball. Runners at first and second. Willie Mays raced to the left center field wall beyond the 400 foot mark for Ted Williams' skyscraper. One strike, no ball. There's the stretch. Larry Jackson from the belt. The pitch. Slow curve swung. High pop fly should be caught in right center. Henry Aaron is there waiting for it, and he takes it. Vera pulled on a change of pace. Pop to Aaron at short right. Jackson does that very well. He's got a fine fastball, sharp curve, and he changes speeds beautifully. He pulled a tough hitter with a that time. Jackson has won 10 and lost 4. He's the Cardinals' leading pitcher in their surprising surge to the top of the National League standing. Here's Frank Malzoni now, the Red Sox third baseman. First pitch is in there. Fastball at the knees. Malzoni bounced into a force play in the sixth. 27 years old. Stockily built. Right-handed batter. Runners at first and second and two up. Jackson ready from the belt. Here's the pitch. There's a line drive right at Matthews. The inning is over. Malzoni lined hard to Matthews to retire the side. One hit. No runs, no errors, and two left. So, in the middle of the eighth inning, the score remains. The American League three, the National League two. And as I mentioned a moment ago, down there on the field today, we've got one of the great leaders in baseball, old Casey Stink, master strategist, a good judge of ball players. Casey's men look up to him. They respect his advice. And you can bet that they go along with him when he says to look and feel your best. You've got to be clean shaved. When Casey says that, he means shave with the Gillette Super Speed Razor. Today you have a choice of three Gillette Super Speeds. Light, regular, and heavy. One correctly engineered to answer your particular requirements. The light for men with lighter beards. Regular for average skin and beard. Heavy for tough, wiry beards. One is designed and positively guaranteed to match your individual skin and beard exactly. So choose yours for shaves that look wonderful, feel wonderful, and are clean. Clean as a shave can possibly be. A dollar gets your Gillette Super Speed Razor with Gillette Blue Blade Dispenser and handy travel case. The Cuban Comet, the star of the White Sox, Minnie Minoso, now playing left field, replacing Ted Williams. What is the equivalent now, perhaps, of a defensive move as the American League protects a one-run lead? Minoso in left field. Gino Samoli of the Brooklyn Dodgers will be the pinch hitter against Billy Pierce. He's batting for Larry Jackson, who pitched two scoreless innings. There's the windup in the pitch to the right-handed hitter. He takes the strike, a slider that hit the outside corner. Billy Pierce. 
in a relief roll. Goes into the windup of the pitch to Gino Simoli. Outside gets away from the catcher. Rolls back to the screen and the count is evened up. One ball and one strike. Simoli, right-handed batter. Last year, Gino uh, just hung on with the Dodgers at 111. This year, he's one of the bright stars of the game. Here's the windup by Billy Pierce. The 1 1 pitch. Swung and he fouled it off his foot. That one hurt. Gino is hitting 310 this year for the Dodgers with nine homers and 34 RBIs. That foul ball off the shin bone always hurts. Red Shaney's goes over to sympathize with him. You know, during the season when that happens, I don't know if it's so during an All Star game, you can hear him start barking out of the dugouts as they needle the batter. By being hit on the dogs. Two strikes on the ball. Billy Pierce facing a pinch hitter, Gino Samoli. Samoli comes from San Francisco. There's the pitch on the way. High and inside. Two balls, two strikes. So many wonderful ball players of Italian parentage have come out of that area. Frankie Crossetti, Joe DiMaggio, Gino Samoli. And not just of Italian parentage either. Paul Jonas, our, <laughs> our producer here, director. 2-2 two, two pitch, here it is. Strike three, a curveball hit that outside corner to the Samoli called out on strike. He had given up on the curveball thinking it was going to be wide when suddenly it broke and hit the outside corner. Now here's Red Changes. As a pitch hitter, he gave the crowd a thrill in the sixth. And then Al Kaline gave them a greater one and brought them roaring to their feet in appreciation of a great defensive play when he leaped up against the wall. Here's Shane D. swinging late and fouling the first pitch, strike one. Veteran second baseman, Red Shane. Formerly the Cardinals and Giants and now Milwaukee Braves hope to lead them to a pennant. One strike, no ball. The pitch. Swung late, fouled in the right field corner. Out of play. Two strikes and no ball. Two strikes and no ball. One man out. Ball game of the eighth. Red Shandies. Here's the pitch. Swung and he fouled it back to the screen. Two strikes and no ball. Shane you know, has the distinction of hitting one of the more dramatic home runs of all-star history. Winning an extra inning game at Comiskey Park a few years back. Here's the pitch. Swung again and fouled. He's certainly getting his cuts up there. It was Shane Dees Homer in the top of the 14th that gave the National League a 4 to 3 victory over the American League. Two strikes and no balls. One out. The American League leads 3 to 2 or in the bottom of the eighth. This has certainly lived up to the All Star game billing. It's been that kind of a ball game. Here's the pitch. Kerr missed outside. Two strikes and a ball. One out. Shane Dees, who's a switch hitter, bats right-handed against Pierce. He gets left-handed against Lowe's when he hit the long drive back to the wall. It was caught. Here's the pitch, swung, a bouncing ball. Nelly Fox to his right up, throws to first. He's got him on a nice play. Two away. Nelly Fox roaming to his right. That old fellow looks like he's top-heavy, as if he's on the bias. He's got that big wad of chewing tobacco as... Bob Neal told you earlier in the game. It looks like he's either got a toothache or else he's top tilted. <laughs> what a ball player the little fella is. Here's Henry Aaron now. Two out and nobody on. Billy Pierce gets his signal. Into the windup. The pitch on the way. Curveball outside. Aaron 
who leads the National League in hitting 347 and in home runs with 27 and in RBIs with 73. At one out of three today, the pitch swung and he missed and he had a home run cut. Aaron, 23 years old, from Mobile, Alabama. Another one of the many fine young ball players who've come around the last few years. There's the windup. The pitch on the way. Swung on and sliced foul into the upper deck. A souvenir for somebody. And Aaron only 23, and this is his fourth full season of the major leagues. And in his third, last year, he led the league in hitting. Some think he'll be leading it for the next 10. Great hitter. Two strikes and a ball. The pitch. Swung and he struck him out. And Billy Pierce is a great pitcher. So it's one, two, three, and nothing across. Pierce now is fans three out of the five men that he's faced. At the end of eight innings, the score remains the American League three, the National League two.
beautifully pitched ball game. Now Millie Fox talks to third base coach Frankie Crossetti. The American League has a chance to break it wide open. Runners at first and second, nobody out. Nellie Fox the batter, and then the big bombers come up. K-Line, Mantle, and Minnie Minoso is replaced Ted Williams. Pitch to Fox. He bumps a high hopper back to the mound. He might be able to beat it out. Levine throws in time. He got him. Boy, that's what you call a Baltimore shot. Funny, Nellie Fox bounced one like a pop fly off home plate. He's credited with a sacrifice, and he came mighty close to beating it out. The play went from Levine to Museum. And now the American League has runners on second and third, one out. Al Kaline, who's been the defensive star of the day, and also had one out of four at the plate. The infield is forced to come in on the grass for the play at the plate. The pitch curves. Steve Reich right in there. Beauty. Clem Levine accustomed to these clutch situations. Warren Spahn working in the bullpen. K-line the batter, the infield in. Here's the pitch. Curve swung, a drive in the center field. Mace comes in, a base hit. One run is in. Here's another man around third. Here's the throw coming towards the plate. Two run score. Now K-line ripped the single in the center field. Now the American Leaguers lead 5-2. to two. The last time the American League played a game in St. Louis, they lost by that score of 5-2. to two. But they're on their way to reversing it, barring a garrison finish in the bottom of the ninth. Now here's Mickey Mantle. Two runs have scored on K-Line's base hit. There's the stretch by Levine. The pitch. Swung! And he missed her foul tip for a strike. Mickey Mantle with that home run cut. He's at one out of three. He's known for his power. But also has tremendous speed of foot. There's the pitch. Outside. The count is evened up. And it was his speed that started the first two-run splurge of the American League when he opened the second inning with an infield hit. As the American Leaguers got two runs in the second inning off Kurt Simmons. One ball, one strike. Levine ready. The pitch. Fast ball, the one outside. Ball two. Two balls and a strike. Yogi Berra and Sam Musial both thought this would be a free-hitting game. And a pitcher's duel up until now. Two balls in the strike. A bind ready. The pitch to Mantle. Curveball. Strike is called. Two and two. The count evens up. Five to two in favor of the American League. We're in the top of the ninth. The National League in their ninth will have Musial, Mays, Bailey as the first three hitters. Two balls, two strikes. Now Levine gets the signal. The big right-hander from Rhode Island hesitates to belt. The pitch, fastball, low and outside. Three balls and two strikes. And this kind of a spot, it isn't necessarily your wild. You're just careful. This guy can lose that ball with one swing. Mickey Mantle at the place. There's Levine into the stretch. The 3-2 delivery instead goes over to first base, the runner back. Levine has won three, lost five for the Dodgers in relief rolls this year. Now he's set. Here's the pitch. He struck him out on the curveball. Mickey Mantle goes down swing. Now Minoso, Mini Minoso, will make his first appearance at the plate. He replaced Ted Williams in left field last inning. A pitch to the right-hand batter, sidearm, curveball outside. I wish I had Buck Canelo there. This guy's full moniker, Saturnino Orestes Armas Mini Minoso. 
from Matanza, Cuba. Here's the pitch fastball. He swings and he misses. And boys, he had a cut. Many last year at 316 for the White Sox. And this year he's batting 317. Consistent. Just a real good ball player. Right hand hitter squares around facing the pitcher. There's the stretch by Levine. And the delivery. Swung. There's a drive. Way back in the right center. It might be out of here. It could be. It's like off the wall. Here's the runner trying to score. And Minoso into second base with a double. Vinny Minoso. Double off the top of the right center field wall. Near the 405 foot mark. And now the American League leads 6 to 2. He really gave that ball a ride. I thought for a moment we are going to see our first home run of the afternoon. Here's Bill Scowron, who's been one of the hitting stars. Big word started and drove in a run with one out of two. Then Scowron came in, and he's had two out of two. Levine ready. The pitch on the way. Curveball. Foul down the third base line. Coach Frankie Cross said he knocks the ball down, and Eddie Matthews recovers it. Six to two, the American League leads. The last time the American League won was three years ago, 11 to nine at Cleveland. One strike and no ball. There's the stretch. Levine looks back, ready now. The pitch, curve, swung, a bouncing ball, bangs in, feels the ball, long throw. He's on the inning is over. So it's three runs. Three hits, one air, one left. For the American League in the top of the ninth. That's going to the bottom half of the ninth inning. The National League's last chance to score six to two. Now let's pause for station identification. This is WGY, WGFM, Schenectady. This is Harry Carey again from Bush Stadium in St. Louis. The 24th All-Star Game is about to be written in the record books. It takes a garrison finish for the National League. They trail 6-2. A close ball game. But the American Leaguers in the ninth now have scored three. And Billy Pierce will protect a four-run lead. Sam Musial will lead off. He's got one out of three. Pierce came in in the relief roll with a time on his second and one out in the seventh. Got Matthews and struck out Banks. He's also fan Aaron. And a pinch hitter Samoli. Here's the first pitch to Musi low. Sam fly to left, double to right, and line to center. One ball, no strikes to count. Billy Pierce into the windup. The pitch on the way. Fastball low, ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Set. The pitch to Musial. Try and get that outside corner of fastball. The most runs ever scored in the bottom half of the ninth inning in the All Star game history was four by the National League. Here's a pitch ball three, rather by the American League, in Detroit, July 8, 1941. That's the year that Williams hit the hollow dramatic home run to win it. Three balls and a strike. Here's a pitch. Ball four. You see a walk. Here's Willie Mays facing Billy Pierce for the first time. Willie's had one out of three and made one fine play at deep left center off Ted Wood. Six to two, the American League leads. Boy, oh boy, this game sure has lived up to the billing. This is what you would expect from the cream of the crop. It's been an outstanding ball game. Good pitching, good feeling, good hitting. And 
just a miscue here or there to prove that they're human. Now May takes a curved strike call. In fact, there's only been one. And Eric tries to change East on a little slow roller. Willie May is waiting. Now the stretch by Pierce, the delivery. Swung on, a line drive going in the right field. It is a fair ball into the corner, extra bases. Fieldfield's on his way to third. He's around third base now. He's going to try to score. It'll be a triple for me. Willie Mays sliced the triple into the right field corner. The ball hit fair and then rolled into the bullpen. And got lost under the bench. Al Kaline couldn't find it. And Willie Mays settles around the third base. It's now a six to three ball game. And here is Hank Boyle to the Pittsburgh Pirates. A right handed batter. Boyle hitting 313 for the year. Six homers, 25 RBI. He'll bat for Ed Bailey. A runner at third, nobody out. Bob Grimm, a right hander of the Yankees, and Don Morrissey, a left hander of the Indians, are now warming up in the bullpen. The three runs the American League got in the top of the ninth loom even more important now as the National League challenges. Here's Boyle to pitch. Boyle pitch! Here's a runner down the line. He's going to score. Six to four now. Nobody out. That was a fastball that Yogi Berra couldn't get his hands on. A wild pitch charge to Billy Pierce. Yes, sir. We've got a lot of excitement in this one. Now it's six to four. Nobody out. Bottom of the ninth. Hank Foyle. A pitch hitter. Ball won the count on him. Pierce looks down, has a sign. The wind up of the pitch. Swung and he missed to the fastball. One ball, one strike. Foyle. Used to be with Cincinnati, Cleveland, now Pittsburgh. From Richmond, Virginia. A six-footer. Here's the pitch. Swung. A high pop foul off to the right. Out of play into the stands. Strike two. Two strikes on the ball. Henry Lee Foyles. F-O-I-L-E-S. Attended the University of Virginia, as well as the College of William and Mary. Right hand batter up there. Two strikes in the ball. Two runs are in. Nobody out. Nobody on. Here's the windup. Now the pitch. There's a base hit to the center field. Hank Boyle singles to center. And the tiny run now will be at the plate. The crowd has really come to life as we're having a most exciting ninth inning. Boyle with two strikes in the ball. Lane's one in the center field. Well, now here's Gus Bell. Of those three runs scored by the American League in the top half of the inning, only one was earned. That is a very little matter now, because the score is six to four. Tiny run at the plate. Nobody out. The crowd, naturally partisan for the National League, just being a National League city. There's a stretch pitch. Outside for one. Casey Stengel is poised. Like a pointer. Right below his ear. Ready to pounce onto the field. And now he goes back into the dugout. One ball, no strike. The stretch the pitch. Outside for two. Billy Fox, the second baseman, comes in to talk to Billy Pierce. And here goes Casey Stengel out there. The unpredictability, which is baseball's greatest fascination, is shown again. Billy Pierce was invincible. The American League got three more runs for him. It looked like it was going to be a cakewalk. And lo and behold, two runs are in, the runners at first, two balls and no strikes on the hitter, there's nobody out. And anything might still happen. Six to four, the American League in front. Bottom half of the ninth inning. 
just fell the batter. Billy Fears into the stretch, hesitate. A pitch to Val. Oh, three! Three balls and no strike. Eddie Matthews going to be next. the stretch, the pitch. He walked him and the tying wins are on with nobody out. Let's see now. Casey Stengel comes out again. He's going to make a change here. Billy Pierce walks Gus Bell on four pitches. And looking at the record on Billy Pierce, this is his fourth All-Star game. He's number 1-1. He's allowed only one run and only four hits previously in the nine innings that he had pitched. Winning and losing in all-star games, of course, are relatively unimportant in as much as you're confined and restricted sometimes to only three innings of pitching. Now, the Cleveland Indian base of the bullpen, another left-hander, Don Mossy. And I think the crowd can use this little break even more than the ball players because it's become the most exciting moment as the National League is rallying here in the ninth inning. Billy Pierce leads the field. Billy retired the first five men that he faced, three of them on strike. But he opened the ninth inning by walking Musial. Mays tripled the right, scoring Musial. Foils after Mays had scored on a wild pitch single to center, and out goes Bell is one. So, John Mossy from St. Helena, California, 6'2, 195 pounds. For Cleveland last year, he won six and lost five. And for the Indians this year, he's won six and lost two. And uh, Bob Beal, who broadcast the Indian games, mentions to me that from his usual relief role, he has now become a starting pitcher for manager Kirby Farrell of the Cleveland Indians. All right, here's the dramatic picture here. American League 6, National League 4, runners at first and second, nobody out, and Eddie Matthews will be the hitter. Matthews has had nothing out of two. Although, on that one play, ordinarily it would have been a base hit. But on a solid single to right, the runner is forced to second base. John Mossy. Slim left-hander. Eddie Matthews straddles the plate. There's the stretch. Now the pitch on the way. Strike a curveball in the outside corner of the belt. One strike and no ball. Now Matthews looks down at Bobby Reagan, who's coaching at third base. See what the situation will be so far as whether a bunt is on or not. Something they take on and take off with every pitch sometimes. There's the stretch. A pitch to Matthews. Low one outside, and the count is even done. One ball and one strike. Bottom half of the ninth inning. And as exciting in an all-star game, I guess, as the series is known. Don Mossy. Getting set. One ball, one strike. Eddie Matthews has given no indication of bunting. There's the stretch. Now the pitch. Here it is. Curveball outside. Two balls to the strike. Ernie Banks will come up next. Bob Cream is down in the bullpen. The Yankees are in a spot to move from South Florida right-hander again. If the situation demands. Casey Single on the top step of the dugout. You think they don't want to win these games? Walter Alston, likewise, of the National League. 
Two balls and a strike. From the belt. The pitch now to Eddie Matthews. Here it is. Swung and he fouls it out of play. And the count is evened up. Two balls, two strikes. Little did I dream when I settled earlier. But this game might be building up to a tremendous climax. This is it. Last half of the ninth inning. The tying runs on base, the winning run at the plate. Nobody out. Eddie Matthews. Who for the season has hit 17 homers for the Milwaukee Braves. Waiting up there. Two balls, two strikes. Now the stretch, the hesitation. Here's the pitch. Oh, he took him out of beauty. Fossey broke off a sharp curveball. And Matthews took strike three. A great job of clutch pitching. And now here's Ernie Banks. One out. Tiny runs still on at first and second. looking for his first hit in all-star game competition. Of course, he's only been to bat four times. All told. This is his third all-star game. There's the stretch. A pitch to the right-handed batter on the way. Curse one on the ground ball. Through the third base to the left field. His foot off the left foot. He's going to score. Here's the runner trying for third. He is out. Number no go to Maldoni. Slips a single through Malzoni in the short left. Mini Minoso with that great speed made a quick recovery. Fired in the third base. And Gus Bell trying to go from first to third was cut down. What a big play that is. The single for Banks and a run batted in. He took second on the throw to third base. And now the tying run is at second base with two out. Oh, that might have been the ball game there. Had Bell made it? It would be 6-5 and runners at second and third with only one out. Now Phil Hodges comes up. Fighting for Clem Levine. And here is Casey Stengel out. He will counter with a right-handed pitcher. He has indicated. The tiny run is at second base. There are two outs. Bottom half of the ninth inning and what a thriller this one's turned out to be. And it isn't over yet. There's a fan who can't contain himself. He's out on the field. Jumped over the low railing. I don't know why. He, uh, in his excitement, he threw his straw hat out. So he merely jumped over the wall to recover it. Well, here it is. Bob Grimm will come in. A fine young pitcher of the New York Yankees. You know, it's Bob rather Grimm. difficult to vary adjectives with these ball players. Almost have to say fine, good, or great about all of them. But it's excusable, I think, any redundancy. After all, they are the All-Stars. The finest players in the game of baseball. Bob Grimm was 1-8, lost 3, earned run average 3 for the year. He's walked only 13 men, struck out 31. Good control, good sinker, good right-handed. The big play, the re quick recovery of Bimonoso, of that hot single through the third baseman's legs. And now Zoni, who had tried to feel the ball, very alertly got back, hustling, so that it, there would be somebody for Minoso to throw to. Sometimes you see in that situation a chagrin. A ball player never gets back to cover the bag. But now Zoni did. Minoso threw him a strike. And there was no doubt that Gus Bell was out. And now another left-hander. Boy, they're sure ready for any emergency. They got Bobby Shantz now, working in the bullpen for the American League. The National League has Warren Spahn. Gil Hodges will be the pinch hitter. Hodges batting 309 for the year with 10 homers, 38 RBI. Hodges, an all-star game play. This is his all-star game. He's at 364 in this classic. The 
right-handed batter. Gil Hodges with the time on a second and two out. Bob Grimm finishing up his practice tosses. And the moment and the point of decision has now been reached. It'll be yay or nay for the National League. If Hodges delivers, they're still in the ball game. If he doesn't, they'll be... Oh, you battle through nine tremendous innings. And you come down to where one man alone will decide the entire outcome of the ball game. Gil Hodges. Bob Grimm, a native New Yorker. Rookie of the year in 1954. Broad-shouldered right-hander goes into the stretch. The pitch now to Gil Hodges. Here it is. A little bit outside, a fastball. This fellow throws a real good sinker. A sidearm fastball. Usually makes you hit the ball on the ground. The outfield plays Hodges straight away. The infield, a shade to pull. They're moving Mickey Mantle back towards left center, deeper. Now the stretch by Grimm, the pitch. There's a drive deep to left field, but also going, and now comes in to make the catch. The ball game is over. Gil Hodges in a bullet in the left field and sunk. Kenny Minoso, who started back, had a race in, made the catch beautifully, and the ball game is over. And the final score is thrilling and a hair raising a ball game as you've ever seen. The American League, six runs, ten hits, no errors. The National League, five runs, nine hits, one error.